shoppers are facing unprecedented challenges. From supply chain problems to shortages, it's all adding up to potential price hikes for all of us. In the next 25 minutes, we're going to help keep spirits bright, showing you how to make the holidays shine on a dime and show you different ways you can spruce up your holiday feast without breaking the bank. Plus, learn how to avoid getting ripped off when you're shopping online. But first, at the center of it all is the supply chain. For that, we go to NBC's Tom Costello, who has been following it closely. Hey, Tom. Yeah, hey, Vicki. You know, we've seen the congested shipping yards, the container ships in a virtual parking lot out on the Pacific Ocean, the understocked store shelves nationwide. But now, as we approach the holiday shopping season, the global shortage of goods is something we're all going to be reckoning with. From ports jammed with container ships miles out to sea to long wait times for deliveries and many empty shelves, the signs of a stressed supply chain are on full display. The complex movement link by link of products from one corner of the globe to the other, disrupted because of COVID shutdowns, worker shortages, and now skyrocketing demand. Now, with the holiday season around the corner, consumers will need to adapt to an economy still reeling from the pandemic. The busy ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles now operating 24-7, trying to clear up a massive cargo backlog. Last month, I got a front row seat to the pileup on the Pacific. Everywhere you look, there's a ship just sitting out here in the water. The problem? Not enough space at the dock to unload all the goods and a nationwide shortage of truck drivers. That log jam has left some U.S. store shelves empty of key products. A typical ship like this carries as many as 14,000 containers. And in each container, about $100,000 worth of merchandise. But right now, these ships are sitting, going nowhere. From toys to clothing, electronics to furniture, even car parts are in short supply. The American importer cannot digest all of this cargo into their domestic supply chains. 50% of all truckers licensed to do business at the ports no longer come here. The disruptions are affecting businesses of all sizes. Candace Williams opened the Toy Maven in Dallas 16 years ago. Hoping to get a head start to avoid delays, she ordered holiday inventory months ahead of schedule. And having to take um, your holiday inventory as early as April, May, June, you know, July is really a bit overwhelming. 95% of the national tree company's artificial Christmas trees come from China. Their cargo container costs have skyrocketed, forcing them to raise prices. Yeah, unfortunately, we've had to pass some of that cost increase on. And so, you know, we're looking at about a 20 to 25% uh, price increase this year. Meanwhile, at the nation's largest retailers, the now hiring signs are up. Amazon, Walmart, Target, UPS, and FedEx, all adding tens of thousands of seasonal staffers. But Unlike years past, they face a workforce that's seen millions of Americans quitting their jobs in recent months. So what can you do? Experts say buy your holiday essentials early and plan for price hikes in your budget. As for when these supply chain woes might ease up. The import market's going to stay strong probably through next summertime, but we'll see a plateauing of the imports themselves so we can catch up on this backlog. Yeah, recently, the Biden administration announced steps to fast track $17 billion earmarked for ports in the new infrastructure bill, really even before it signed into law. Some of those highlights include modernizing ports and marine highways, deepening harbors for larger cargo, cargo ships. The administration also letting ports redirect grant money saved from other projects to supply chain issues as well. Vicki? Tom, that relief can't come soon enough. In the meantime, though, what is your advice for consumers? Are there things we should be prioritizing when we're shopping? Well, there, there are a whole bunch of ideas here. Uh, number one, order earlier to ensure your delivery arrives before Christmas. Some retailers are even urging shoppers to order before November 30th. Prioritize items on sale. Walmart, Target, Amazon, they're all offering early Black Friday promotions. Uh, estimated delivery dates are expected to vary greatly between different retailers. So read the fine print on when your delivery might actually be expected. All great advice. Thanks so much, Tom. Really appreciate it. And still to come on Consumer Confidential, grocery costs are also going up. But don't worry, we will help you save money on your holiday meals. Plus, are you still looking for that perfect gift? Tips to keep you from going broke snagging those must-have items. 
the storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Food prices are also on the rise, but there are ways to save this year as you plan your holiday meal. Toby Stanger is the senior editor at Consumer Reports. She joins us now with some simple tips and tricks for saving money while grocery shopping this year. Welcome, Toby. Thanks for being Thank here. You. Okay, so let's start with menu planning. A lot of people hosting their first Thanksgiving in a while because we didn't have one last year. It all starts with being prepared. So what's the best way to start out with that shopping list and make sure you've got a menu that works? So really, planning is key. Before you go out there, check the circuit of your local supermarkets, more than one. Mm -hmm. um, download the app if you don't have it. Join their uh, loyalty clubs because they will tell you what's on sale now. And then you can plan. You know, you might not want to do exactly the same thing you did last year. If you see something that's on sale that's great, grab it. Also, take advantage of the various apps that are out there. There's mm -hmm. Flip, Ibotta, Basket. They all do something different. They'll help you find the deals either by showing you all the circulars that are local or giving you a rebate from what you buy at checkout. And they all can be very useful in saving money. It takes a little bit of practice, but we did download some of those apps and you get used to it and it can really add up in savings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about store brands because we always hear, oh, buying store brands helps you save money. What about the quality of the store brands? Are you seeing a difference? Are they getting better? So Consumer Reports has done some uh, looking at store brands. It's been a little while, but we did find at that time that really store brands were better or uh, just as good as uh, name brands, mm -hmm. and they can be 25% less. So they really are worth looking for. I mean, if you have a name brand you really want, okay, stick with it. But store brands can be very useful. Uh, I agree. So let's talk about the recipe swaps for the holiday meal. You mentioned mm -hmm. look for things that are on sale. That might be a way to switch it up. What else? And this is something I always have a hard time saying it, but the charcuterie platter. Tell me about ways to save on that because everybody loves a good charcuterie. Right. So <laughs> charcuterie, typically it involves a lot of cut up meats and mm -hmm. cheeses. But, you know, meats are expensive this year. Maybe yes. you don't have meats. Maybe you have a deviled eggs instead. Maybe instead of a baked brie or some shrimp, maybe you have some cut up um, cheddar mm. and you have pickles, you have dried fruit, you have just simpler things that look beautiful and will really impress your guests. I love a good hummus, but you have another idea for chickpeas. You're saying chickpeas can be kind of the star this year. Yeah, so instead of nuts, which are great but can be expensive mm -hmm. and also fatty, you can take a can of chickpeas, they're very cheap, pour out the liquid and you can air fry or roast the chickpeas, throw a little salt, herbs. And by the way, that liquid, you can whip that and make it into a vegan meringue. Oh. It really works. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I will have to try that. Tell me about the dessert because everybody cares about dessert. What are some options or alternatives for the apple pie? Yeah, so apple pie, everyone loves apple pie, but you can get a lot of that same texture and flavor with a crisp. Slice the, you don't even have to, you don't even have to peel them, mm -hmm. just slice the apples, lay them down, or pears, mix a little flour, a little sugar, a little butter, some spices, you throw that on top, you bake it, and it will put that same smell in there, it's wonderful. Baked apples are even less expensive and easier to do. You just core the apple, throw a little sugar in, throw um, some nutmeg and cinnamon, a little pat of butter, throw it in the oven, and it will make your house smell like the holidays. Oh, it does. We used to do that as an after-school snack. That's a great reminder. Okay, I am hungry now. Those are all really helpful tips for the holiday. Toby Stanger with Consumer Reports, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, when we come back on Consumer Confidential, what to buy now and what you should wait to buy in 2022. Plus, bargain hunters, beware of the scammers who are trying to take advantage of you, the red flags to watch for so you don't get ripped off. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker. A Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Saving during the holidays is always a challenge, but this year with the supply chain issues and rising prices, it's even more important to find those savings where we can. Smart shopping expert Trey Bodge is here with tips on saving money as you navigate this year's holiday shopping season. Trey, welcome. So we're hearing so much about the supply chain. I want to talk about what people might consider buying now, and is it safe to wait for Black Friday on certain things, or maybe even into December? Are we going to see empty store shelves? Okay, so that's a complex question. So I think that people should look for specific things that they have on their list. For instance, if there's a hot toy that's really popular, you might want to get that now. Anything with a chip like a laptop or a smartphone or a TV, those are the things I would focus on right now. Okay. As we get to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I would focus on general electronics, apparel and footwear and beauty because that's where the deepest discounts are. And then December, I would hold out for winter apparel, more general toys, and then gift sets and gift boxes, holiday themed items. That is a really good game plan for timelining what you need, but get the specific items away right away because you don't want to risk them selling out. Yeah. What about if you want to buy something because you want to make sure that it's there under the tree or there on time for Hanukkah, mm -hmm. but you're worried it's going to go on sale later in the season? Well, there are price protections from some retailers. Most of the major retailers like Walmart, Target, Amazon, Best Buy, they offer some kind of price protection mm -hmm. against their own prices and then also against competitors. So when you are shopping with them, simply ask a salesperson, say, can I find out what your price protection policy is and see if it makes sense to buy that item now mm -hmm. and take the risk that the price might go down or wait. Yeah, sometimes it's just two weeks, but I feel like they're being a little more generous this year. But as a consumer, don't you have to be on top of that? You do. I mean, it does take some work, and so that's why I say I would definitely ask and then evaluate yourself whether it's worth doing that or not. What other strategies, besides waiting for those sales, what other strategies do you have for us to save money when we're shopping? Sure. So we're going to see a lot of sales, and we're already seeing sales, but there are so many other ways that you can kind of sweeten the pot when it comes to deals. So, for instance, look at your memberships. If it's like an AARP membership, oh. AAA, see if they have exclusive discounts with certain retailers. Look at what your credit card is offering. Do they give extra points if you shop retail? You want to use that card maybe versus another. Mm -hmm. And then in addition, they might have special sales going on with certain retailers, loyalty programs as well, and then lots of deal sites. Definitely take those extra couple minutes to look for ways to save along the way because it will really be worth it. And I find that the more you use those apps or the cashback deals or the you know browser extensions, the easier it gets because you get used to it over time, which is really helpful. Yeah. Um, what about the other sale dates that we should be paying attention to? Most of us know Black Friday is the mm -hmm. Friday after Thanksgiving or Cyber Monday is the Monday after that, but are there other dates we should be marking on our calendar? Thankfully, yes. So there is Travel Deal Tuesday, which is the day after Cyber Monday, which is a great deal, for, a day for travel deals. And then we have Free Shipping Day, we have Green Monday, and then we have Super Saturday, and those are throughout December. So take a look at those dates. That will be a good time to look for additional sales in case you do wait until the last minute for certain things. Yeah, we definitely want people to mark those down on their calendar, put it on your phone. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about returns, because not everything under the tree is going to be something you want to keep. So what do we need to know about return policies this year? Are they more generous? They're pretty comparable every year from what I'm seeing, but what's nice around the holidays is they are extended. So for instance, if you buy something in say mid-October, early November, and your recipient wants to return it, they have a week or two or more into January to return that item. And that's fairly common across most major retailers. All right, Trey Baj, have a wonderful holiday. Thank you for coming in today. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. All right, ahead on Consumer Confidential, shine on a dime, how to add sparkle to your holiday season without spending a fortune. Also, pets can be a popular present this time of year, but be careful, scammers could rip you off. 
what to know when you're shopping online, whether it's for a furry friend or other gifts on your list. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. As the holiday shopping season kicks into high gear, so do the scams. Experts say conditions are ripe for fraudsters. What to watch for so the Grinches don't ruin your holiday. The holiday shopping season is upon us. But be careful what you click and scan. Thanks to the pandemic and the increase in online shopping, BBB is really expecting to see an increase in scams this holiday season. Catherine Hutt is with the Better Business Bureau. She says scammers have a new target, QR codes. Everybody's smartphone now can read a QR code. So it's pretty easy for scammers to use QR codes to direct you to a fake website or a site that is an posturing a popular brand. The BBB says cyber crooks are placing QR codes in emails, social media messages, and texts. If the QR code comes from an unknown source, don't scan it. Instead, go directly to the website and be careful when going to any new website. Check the URL. The company name should be close to the beginning. Another thing to look at, the photos. Are they low quality? Are they fuzzy? Misspellings can be another red flag. And also, if the price on the website is deeply discounted and there's a countdown clock, watch out. That could be a high pressure tactic to get you to buy quickly without doing your homework. More online shopping means more shipping another arena scammers are working in shipping scams are uh, notices that you didn't expect or notices that don't mention the merchant's name the more detail that's in uh, a shipping notification the the better check out these examples provided by UPS this one was sent from an email address not associated with UPS and this one using a pressure tactic demanding payment within 24 hours but the BBB says complaints about online pet scams continue to grow. Last year, people reported spending more than $3 million for pets that didn't exist. And the BBB says that average loss has increased to $750. Scammers using COVID as an excuse not to meet in person with the pets. I have personally talked to people who said that their kids just went to bed in tears every night. When buying a pet online, experts say ask to see the pet in real life or do a video call with the breeder and the animal. Check for local reviews of the company and use Google image search. If you see a cute picture of a puppy, just right click on it then scroll down to where it says search Google for the image. If that same picture pops up on a bunch of different websites, chances are it may not be a legit site. Tips to keep you and your wallet safe this holiday season. And when shopping online, it's always best to use your credit card as it can offer protections that debit cards typically don't. Never make purchases with online sellers using prepaid debit cards and never wire them money either. Another area consumers need to think about is product safety. Joining me now is Patty Davis. She's the acting director and press secretary for the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Thank you so much for joining us, Patty. 
Hi, Vicki. Tell us a little bit about some of the top safety hazards that your team at CPSC is seeing, especially when it comes to the holiday gifts and items. Well, CPSC has some of the strongest standards for products in the entire world, especially for toys. But every year we do see injuries and deaths that uh, are associated with those products. Uh, we were seeing 150,000 toy-related injuries, nine deaths, and most of those are related to kids choking on small parts. Another mm -hmm. issue is riding toys. We see kids riding into traffic, falling off, and that's been an issue that we've seen as well for safety. Oh, I know that you're also on top of it when it comes to testing those toys for things like phthalates and also those holiday lights that come in as well. When you are specifically looking at the toys, what can parents do to make sure that they are not in those stats? You, I think it was in 2029 deaths and as you said, more than 150,000 ER related injuries. What should we be doing to protect those kids? Well, number one, look for an age-appropriate toy for your child. It should say on the box, what age is this toy intended for? If you see also another sticker that says this toy has small parts, it's not intended for a child under three, don't give that to your child under three. And in fact, you can do the easy toilet paper tube test. Just take one from your house. If you have a product in your home and it has small parts in it, it's a toy for a child, and part of that fits through that toilet paper tube, that is not intended for a child under three and your child can choke uh, on that product. When you give your child a riding toy, very popular over the holidays, just make sure that you're also giving them the gear and that they wear the gear when they're, when they're out there riding that toy. Oh yeah, like the helmets, the elbow pads, the knee pads. I love that toilet paper roll trick. That's easy, everybody has one of those in their home. So if the item can fit in there, it's too small for kids three and under. That's right. Even little pieces of the item that comes off and it fits through that tube, that's a no-go for your child. Great hack. Cyber crooks, we know they're in overdrive right now because so many of us are looking for bargains. A lot of us are shopping online. We also might be shopping through new websites with deals. So what do we need to know when it comes to counterfeit goods and what should consumers be on the lookout for? Any red flags you can share with us? Well, that's great. Yeah, be aware of bogus products. So we're at the ports alongside the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and we are watching and catching many of those products. But you can do your part, too. Shop with a trusted retailer, a retailer that you know. That's the safest way to avoid counterfeit products. And as you mentioned previously in your story, if the price is too good to be true, that is a major red flag. Avoid it. Patty Davis with CPSC. Thank you so much for joining us, Patty. Thank you. Next, add some sparkle to your holiday without breaking the bank. The phrase you need to know when Consumer Confidential returns. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. As the world moves closer to normalcy this holiday season, finally, families across the country are looking for ways to add holiday magic to their celebrations 
without overspending. Here to help us make our holidays shine on a dime is lifestyle and entertaining expert and author of Zero Proof Drinks, Maureen Petrosky. Maureen, welcome and thank you for coming to play. I'm so excited. So you have this acronym that's going to help us. There's a key phrase. Tell us about it. Yes, yeah, so the magic word is shine. Like and it. And I'm going to give you five and simple ways to add that little extra holiday sparkle to your home this holidays without breaking the bank. So okay, let's start with S. Money. Yes. Let's start with S. Stick with what you have. Okay. So you'll see here I have a mirror that's the base for my centerpiece. Mm -hmm. it's I took this mirror right off my wall. And mirrors are great to use because they're low and they reflect a lot of light. So if you're using things like pillared candles or fairy lights, they're perfect for a tabletop. You can use a nice long mirror. We have a round one here. Yeah, this is and cool. Then, great idea to take it right off the wall and it makes a nice base. And it reflects all that light. Yes. And so it's, we're kind of a little crowded here, but you can see it on the middle of a table. It's gorgeous. And again, something you already have in the home. Okay. Second, this is a cake dish I used right oh, from my fun. kitchen. Yes. So this cake dish is elevating some of my already holiday ornaments mm -hmm. that might not shine quite as much if they're on their own on a side table or something. But by putting it here, it elevates it and brings it up to a beautiful centerpiece. So a cake dish is a great thing to use for a little bit of height, but not too much height. Two great tips. Okay, so that's the S. Stick with what you Stick have. What you H. Have. H, homemade. Oh, this is the DIY dream season, right? It's the holidays. This is absolutely homemade, and I made this in less than an hour for under $10. Wow. So, wreaths can cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can get things right from your backyard. This is a little bit of spray paint, some evergreens, hot glue, which should be on you at all times at the holidays anyway. <laughs> and the back of this is actually the two parts of a leftover box. So yeah. everyone has delivery boxes. Can turn that around. I just want to yeah. show people that really so it's see. just cardboard. Like it's, even a yes. you know, non-DIYer like myself, I feel like this is actually really doable. Absolutely. Just to have to have the hot glue gun it's ready to go. Literally hot glued leaves, these magnolia leaves. My neighbor let me Love my it. neighbor Kelly let me come over and clip them out of her yard. And if you don't have magnolia leaves, you can use any evergreen. It holds the spray paint like we've got that beautiful metallic spray paint on there. Oh, we're getting caught. And that can hold up all holiday season. Yeah, this is great. And in any glue, room, it can leaves, be also cardboard. indoor, outdoor. Okay. Under $10. I love it. Glue, leaves, Hold cardboard. On. Okay, S-H-I is next. Stands for inventive. Let's be inventive. Yes. Okay, Christmas ornaments or holiday ornaments aren't just for the tree. Right. This is a perfect way to display them low for centerpieces just in glass bowls. Mm -hmm. I've got two different here and some of my favorite ornaments, but sometimes ornaments might lose their top. Yes. So the ornament caps come off often when you're decorating the tree or they might even break, mm -hmm. but you still love that beautiful color. Putting them all into a nice clear bowl is a great way to display them, but that. also can be put anywhere, an entranceway, even in a powder room for a perfect pop of holiday sparkle. It is. It's like instant festivities. Okay, S-H-I-N. N. No more wrapping paper. I love that. So no more wrapping paper. We're all trying to conserve a little bit more mm -hmm. these days. Take your grocery bags, turn them inside oh. out. I remember when I was a kid, we used to cut paper bags to cover our textbooks. Yes, I did that all the time. I love making <laughs> so book covers. I feel like that nostalgia when I'm making these yes. gifts like this. And you can make them so pretty and sparkle. Again, some great. fresh evergreens or even some evergreens that you can get at the craft store. But this is, again, no cost item. And look how beautiful you made it. Yeah, Just this is gorgeous. That are right around. And you put some things that you can find right out. Outside. I wouldn't think to turn my paper bags inside, inside out. out. And Genius. you can also use things like chalk markers, let the kids decorate them, put hand prints, prints on there. You can make it as festive as you want. Okay, finally, we got to get to E. Yes. Complete the shine. E is my favorite part. <laughs> Entertaining. Okay, so okay. even your drinks can add a little bit of sparkle. So what I did here was this is a zero proof drink. This is a hibiscus cooler and it's got a nice sugared rim. So mm -hmm. I'm taking a pretty glass. I'm using a little bit of fresh lemon got juice. Got it. Just like all and the way around. that's how you get it to stick to the sugar. And that's how you get it to stick to the sugar. Okay. And so I've got two different sugars Perfect. here. One is hibiscus, mm -hmm. so that's fun to play off of that. Yeah. Again, a nice big granulated sugar. And then this one is a vanilla. Perfect. This is called Starlight. I love All right. this. So then you just twirl it in there. Le like oh, that. perfect. And there adds your sparkle. The dip and twirl. Okay, let the me cheers and you. And thank you, Maureen and Petrosky, for coming cheers. in. Cheers. I hope this your holiday so shine. Fun. Shine cheers. indeed. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that is all we have time for today. Joining us again in two weeks for another edition of Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. In the meantime, stay merry.
you were uh, currently in Budapest, uh, as I understand you're shooting a film with Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis. What, what's it been like working with those two? Uh, it's been amazing, man. You know, we got a, an amazing cast for shooting Borderlands, which is uh, an IP that has an amazing following of millions on millions. Um, director Eli Roth, Lionsgate's the studio behind it. Um, you know, Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, myself, Jack Black. Um, I mean, God, we got so many more. It's it's truly one of these situations where you stumble into um, an opportunity that could progress into being super, super big. You know, this is something that could easily go into part two, three, and beyond uh, because of the world that we're playing in um, and the, the creativity within the within the space. So it's uh it's dope. It's it's something that's once again gonna throw my audience for a curveball. I'm excited. Action on action. I'm responsible for the action in the movie. What's the, what's the premise? Uh it's a it's a game. You know, it's based off of a video game. So it's uh it's about a uh, it's about the travel within planets and a search to find um an individual that possesses the powers of being the quote unquote special one you know um and in finding this particular individual you can use their powers that they have to open up what's considered to be this magical thing called the vault which so many people have been trying to get into for years but uh to do it you know you have to you have to have the keys to go and get it done. And it's about searching for those keys, searching for the individual. And uh, that's that's the that's the story in a nutshell. But a band of misfits are kind of put together by accident. And when they're put together, they don't want to leave each other's side and end up fighting against the quote unquote bad people that live in uh, in between these planets. So. It's uh, it's it's like sci-fi, but it's really good. It's grounded within that space as well. Think Fifth Element. Think along okay. those. Lines. Yeah. You you continue to stretch your legs. I mean, let's because let's talk fatherhood for a moment. Here's here's a film where I think a lot of folks are going going to watch this, and they're going to say, oh, oh, that that's not the Kevin Hart I know. Like we're used to Kevin Hart making us laugh, and and not to give away too much. This is Kevin Hart. In a completely different light, how hard was it to uh, to to make the turn? Um, you know, it wasn't hard at all. I think uh, I think th there's no mystery from me to myself about what I'm capable of doing, um, especially in the in the space of acting. I know that I have range. I know that um you know i got a lot of diversity so it's all about the projects you know when the right projects come along if it's time for you to make those transitions then of course you you take it and you do it um the upside was when i felt was the right time for me to step into the direction of drama dramedy and i had great company in doing so um and after that it was like okay that was good. I need to find something on this level or better. And the next project that was bought up was Fatherhood. Um, Marty Bowen had a script, brought it to me and my company at uh, at Heartbeat, and you know we were blown away from day one at Matt Logan's story. And when I found out that it was true, that's when it was like, okay, this could be this could be it because you're not only doing a project that's good on paper you're doing a project that you would have to be good at and stay true to because it's real um that was enough for me you know when i when i got his reason matt was like this is an opportunity to not only share my story but bring light to a thing that happens that people don't really know happens often um and you know his journey from pain to happiness is one like no other so uh, my respect level went through the roof and my appetite for a meaningful piece of material uh, went through the roof as well. So everything lined up, man. Paul White's great director, met with him. Um, and then the Obamas came in as producing partners as well. I mean, all of the boxes were checked that said go. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. 
Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Your your buddy B.O., as, as you call him. Yo, B.O. Uh, what was it like working with 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 Bo on a project like this? Would would he call and and give give some some tips, some feedback? Would he say, "Hey, Kev, I, I think maybe we should do this and not this." You know, the thing about having good producing partners uh, is producing partners knowing their roles and you know where their value is, right? And uh, the value and and promise and having. The Obamas and their company as producing partners is them understanding a good IP, a a good piece of content um, with strong substance and great meaning that could do nothing but spread a, a positive needed message um, in today's time and in our culture. Right. You know, you're talking about um, a black man on the big screen playing the role of a father in a positive light. Uh, I don't think I need to say it, but it's not something you see often, right? You don't you don't see it in a positive light often. We're crackheads, we're in jail, out of jail, we're missing, we're a discovery at the tail end of a life. It's never truly a story that's like from beginning to end, one that you follow in and one that's uplifting. So uh, in this case, I felt that there was a there was a need uh and 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 real want behind the message that was being delivered and you know without putting a stamp on the race card it's it's visual of this being an opportunity to change the narrative that i feel desperately needs to be changed so um the obama's got that and he said this is a great opportunity to uplift uh, black fathers and black men and, you know, give a nod to those that are embracing fatherhood and maybe a little nudge to those that aren't correctly, you know. So um, we were lucky to have them to be a part of it. Uh, once again, everything kind of lined up and all the right boxes were checked. Amen to that, Kevin Hart. Amen to that. How, 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 how did you figure out how to cry on cue? For the film uh i mean you're, you're you're pulling on emotional strings you know it's a it's a heavy story it's a heavy story when i first read the script honestly i teared up in the first 30 pages you know when when what happens happens um it got to me because it's like damn you know this is this is the happiest day of you and your wife's life and you know nine months have been spent looking forward to this particular day and on this day to have something tarnished that or be taken it's uh that's tough that's tough to process that's that's tough to register and those that have had that happen to them my my prayers and condolences go out to them because i couldn't imagine i i i really couldn't imagine so it was putting myself um as deep into that as i possibly could to help me get the emotional, um, the emotional response that I did. Um, and, you know, it also helps when you have an amazing cast around you, you know, I mean, I'm with Alfrey, Alfrey Woodard. And it's, it's, I mean, you're talking about the, the cream of the crop, the best of the best. So, you know, those emotions come out more when you see other people um, putting those emotions on display 
at the thought of. So your game is raised by your surroundings. And you obviously are a father of, of four yourself. How did you draw on your own experiences with fatherhood for the role? Uh, I mean, I, that was my cheat sheet. You know, a lot of the stuff that I was doing, um, I had already experienced, right? So it wasn't like I was playing in a heavy false pretense for some of the stuff. Like I've, I have four kids and I'm on all different ages uh, across the board. So, you know, being able to be hands-on, being able to be a part, I know where the nervousness comes from. I know where the confidence comes from. I know where the fear comes from. Um, I've been there, you know, I've, I've, I've truly lived in it. Uh, I, I had to find comfort and discomfort at, at one point uh, in being a father. And I think so many other fathers do as well. It's just about acknowledging that, understanding that, and being true to that. And I was able to do that. I was able to take that ammunition that I had and apply it uh, to this particular movie. And it worked, you know, I think it, uh, it really, it really worked in my favor, and it and it shows on the big screen. What's been the hardest part of, of being, being a dad? What do you struggle with the most? Hardest part of being a dad is the feeling of, am I doing a good enough job? Well, you know, it's not a struggle. I think that's the wrong word. It's a, it's a thought that's always in the back of your head. Okay. Because as your kids get older, the real world is magnified, all right? And you can protect all you want. You can pamper or do your best to to do and take care of, but ultimately, you know, that kid has to go out into the real world and experience life on their own. So with that thought in the back of your head, it's one of, did I do a good enough job to prepare? Are they ready? Are they, are they capable? Are they going to get eaten alive and, and spit back out into reality? It's like you, these are the things that you just, you, you, you have a tug of war with, right? So, um, I mean, my daughter's 16, my son's 13, about to be 14. My youngest son is three, my daughter's eight months. So, you know, once again, I'm very much spread out, but still I got a 16 year old, right? 18 is right around the corner. Am I doing a good job as a father? Am I present? Am I honest? Am I open? Uh, we're close. Are we close, close? Like, it's just, it's something. And I think that that's what keeps you, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you on your feet. And it keeps you in a position to, to always push and want for more. And that's within a relationship. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. Right, 
You've been in the game a long time as a, as a dad, as you just as you pointed out there. Uh, you had a child during a pandemic. How how was how was that? Low 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 PD low pandemic baby. Uh, <laughs> look, it was it's amazing. You know, I mean, uh, being privileged to to bring a child into this world that's a blessing within itself. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that the times were what they were, but a blessing is a blessing, and and I'm not going to take it as anything other than that. Um, my little princess, you know, we got a new boss of the household, and I love that there's always a changing of the guard. Everybody's had an opportunity to wear that hat, that boss hat, and right now Ori has it. Got me wrapped around a little finger, uh, starting all over, you know. Once you, you, you thought you were close and they were getting out the house, and then I went and 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 put two more in there and i'm right back at the at the starting line so <laughs> it is what it is man I, I love it i enjoy it i wouldn't trade it for the world how how have you changed as a dad i mean when you when you started you you were much younger yeah yeah 41 about to be 42. you grow yeah i mean, I mean that's the that's the great thing about life right you grow as you go so uh I'm I'm very much happy into the man that I've become. Uh the man who I was, I'm very much happy that that I was that man that I did the things that I did and got to experience a lot of the things that I experienced because without those moments and without those things I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in the position I am now to be poised, polished, um, you know, mature, just uh, a, a true adult and I'm not done adulting. I'm not done uh, growing, you know, you don't, you don't get there. Uh, the wise are the old and I, and I truly believe that, you know, there's nothing more refreshing than a conversation with somebody of, of older age because there's so much information that comes from that person because of how much they've lived. And what you find is, is that the information is is key to the next wave success but sometimes this next wave is a little too uh a little too stubborn too cocky too bullheaded to receive it um at the older age that i am now i've been i've been in the position to receive a lot of those gems and and i think it's uh it truly is the beauty of life to watch to watch time go but to watch people grow it's dope as hell to me you're a father of four. It would it would seem to me, at, at least, not a stretch to be a father of five, maybe six. Have you have you given thought to doing it again? Oof. Uh, it's been a discussion, you know. I just told you this this my my baby Ori, you know, Ori is a blessing. There, I don't turn down a blessing. Now, am I planning for a number five? No, no. I'm not. <laughs> If a number five were to happen, yeah. oh man, then oh joy, oh okay. joy, oh joy. Uh, okay. But right now, I think four is a good number. We are we're in a good place, man. Got a got some dogs, got some yeah. kids. We're fine. Five, five. You know, we don't really, we don't need to push for five. Not right now. I think we're in a good space. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. But I don't I don't run anything. I don't know why I'm talking like I can make these decisions. If my wife decides she wants another baby, I gotta oh. have another baby. Yeah, there, there's there is no pushback for me, man. None. There was the accident uh, a while back and, and you suffered a pretty serious back injury. I I I, I caught some video online recently. You you seem to be back 100%. Saw some video of Kevin Hart in the gym and it looks like you're training for something. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh I'm definitely 100% back to myself. Uh currently in the best shape that I've ever been in. I mean, I got in crazy shape for Borderlands because once again, rolling is the action. I'm I'm all stunts. I'm all my own, you know. You're doing it all yourself? I'm doing a lot of that stuff myself. I got a great team. Uh, two great stunt guys, man. Two, two great, great, great stunt guys, uh, that have been with me for quite some time. And, you know, what we do is we put me in positions to do as much of it as I possibly can. You know, when, when it gets to be something crazy, my guys step in, but I, I love to be extremely hands on and get in there. And I did a lot of training for this movie. So, 
I got down to about, I'll say maybe 10 and a half, 11% body fat. Wow. And, you know, all muscle, but I've never, I've never looked like this. I've never been in this shape ever in my life. This is definitely the best shape that I've gotten in at the age 41 and about to be 42. And I worked hard for it. So I, I love the results when you put in the effort. What's left, Kevin Hart? What, what, have, you, what have you not done yet that, that you still want to do? There's so many things uh, in, a, in, the, in the entertainment space that I've been able to tap into. And what I found is that the more diverse you are, the more, the more you can do and the more you can elevate and create opportunities for those around you. Um, that's, that's what my newfound focus is. That's where, that's where my, uh, that's where my ambitions have rolled over to. So, you know, it's about finding the success and then creating, creating bridges to get other people up here and over here. that you love so much. I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? Five there is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fit too. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. How you been? What's going on? Drinking milk, getting tall. So you in Budapest? Is that right? Yes, sir. Big Live one, from the pest. <laughs> I think that's not what their tourism bureau calls it. <laughs> Kevin Hart has built a career by making audiences laugh. Now the superstar comedian is proving he also can move them to tears. Wherever you are, I want to go there. Wherever you are, I want to go there too. In the Netflix drama Fatherhood, Hart plays a single dad raising a daughter after the sudden death of his wife. I'm going to do it. Because I'm a father. I was ready for the Kevin Hart experience. Within, I think, 10 minutes, I was getting choked up. This was an opportunity for me to expand my resume. People are going to be shocked when they see it and go, wow, you know, Kevin's got some dramatic chops. Two kisses. One for mommy. One for me. Well, I love the opportunity of being a black father on screen in a positive light. Most of the times they're on drugs, off drugs, in jail, out of jail, to have some type of positivity behind it and maybe be a part of kind of changing the stereotype. Hart delivers that message with the help of another famous dad named Barack Obama. Fatherhood is co-produced by Higher Ground, the production company started by the former president and first lady. 
Is Barack Obama calling you with notes? You know what? I actually did talk to to Barack. You know, first of all, I think it's just crazy that I can say I've I talked to Barack on the phone comfortably. <laughs> and the fact that you can just drop and call him Barack, that's a statement right there of where you are. Yeah. B O. <laughs> call him B O. Hey B O, what's up, man? I'm sure he loves that. Kevin. Hey Kevin. <laughs> hey Kevin, how you doing? <laughs> you tell me, B O. I'm good. Uh, that's how it went down. The reason why they wanted to take on the project was because of the story and having them see and understand the positive message behind it. I mean, that's that's as good as it gets for me. Hart specializes in positivity. His new book for middle schoolers called Marcus Makes a Movie is about a boy pushing through obstacles to chase a dream. And I wanted to help motivate and inspire our youth to simply understand that the word no is just a word. Coming up as a kid, as a young adult, early in my career, I heard the word no a lot. What's your message to the kids who might read that book who are hearing no at school, they're hearing no in sports or in their music career, they think they're funny and they don't know how to get where Kevin Hart is? I will say, you know, I think it's not about getting where I am. It's about getting where you want to be, right? And all I am is an example of what's reachable. What's obtainable? And what I learned is that talent is amazing to have, but hard work is going to possibly beat talent every day of the week. Hard work plus talent is undefeated. In a year when the rest of the world slowed down, Hart's relentless hustle continued. He performed a hit 2020 Netflix stand-up special from his own living room, with his family getting ready for bed upstairs. I'm no longer comfortable anywhere else but my house. <laughs> I don't f like people anymore. What was that like? How do you put together an act differently than being in Madison Square Garden, for example, standing um, in your living room? Well, you know, we wanted to do something very intimate. Let's address the elephant in the room. COVID. Newsflash. I had it. The vid-19 was in my system. <laughs> It wasn't necessarily about the performance. It was just about me being honest about my, my life, the pandemic. Oh my when it first hit, I went and put gas in all the cars. <laughs> I bought every N95 I saw. I spent 20 grand on N95s. There's just a comfort that comes with being honest and aware. And that was about me having a realization that I'm, I'm good. Does that come with experience and success too, where you're now frankly can say, I don't need to go do that project because I'm good with who I am and where I am. It comes with experience, success, and also a true understanding of what happy is. There's a thing where this is going to make me happy. And if I get this, I'll be the happiest person ever. And then you get it. And then you go, oh, but if I get this, this is going to make me happy. This is all I need. But when you really realize it's about the people, the family, the love, the connection, well, then things kind of change. Everything nearly changed one night in September of 2019, when Hart was a passenger in a single car crash that left him with serious injuries. How much of this perspective that I'm hearing right now, Kevin, comes from the experience of surviving the car accident that you were in and oh being God. able to come home and see your wife and see your kids and appreciate everything? I mean, tons. Understanding that you're not in control, that's a big deal. At any point in time, it can be over. Snap of fingers. Over. I'm fortunate and lucky to still experience life. I don't think most people appreciated how serious your injuries were. Yeah. Um, you broke your back. Almost paralyzed. Almost paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Are you recovered today? 100% recovered. Uh, I was very lucky to still be able to walk. You know, you're talking about a couple centimeters. Uh, that's what separated me and, and being paralyzed. One year after the crash and right in the middle of a pandemic, Hart welcomed a new member of the family. His second child with wife Aniko Parrish. Hart relishing his real life fatherhood. How's your baby girl? Oh man, my baby girl is amazing. Kayori, my heart. I'm so in love as I am all my all my kids, of course. But you know, we got a new a new boss in the household. So it's an exciting <laughs> time. It's me sitting down and getting to to really tap in with my loved ones, with my wife and my kids. Uh, it was a it was a really good thing for me.
Alrighty, dear listeners, we've reached that part of the meal that for many is the piece de resistance of a Thanksgiving spread, the bird. So to tackle such a monumental dish, we have brought in one of the culinary world's true rising stars, chef and writer Sola El Whaley. Now, you may have seen some of her very popular YouTube videos on a variety of channels, including New York Times Cooking. She also has a new show on history titled Ancient Recipes with Sola. Not only is Sola known for creating inventive recipes, but she has an undeniable warmth that truly shines no matter where she is. And today, I am thrilled she's able to join us on Cooking Up a Storm to walk us through her recipes for crisp and juicy herb roasted turkey and honey thyme gravy. Almost sounds like a, an old time and honey thyme gravy. Well, so <laughs> welcome. Good to see you, honey thyme. Happy to be here. I must tell you, this this uh, uh, recipe is, is a revelation to me. It, it, you, that, <laughs> it it's tender, it's crisp, it's flavorful, uh, and and it's all because you a dry brine your turkey mm-hmm. and you spatchcock it. So mm-hmm. why? Okay. So the dry brine. We, we touched on it a little bit before, but it does so many amazing things to the turkey. A dry brine, it sounds like complicated, but you're just putting salt on something and letting it hang out. What happens is as the salt sits on the meat, the, the meat juices dissolves the salt and then it gets drawn into the meat. And then that's going to tenderize the meat fibers by actually dissolving some of the meat fibers into like a gel. So when it cooks up, it's going to be really tender, more forgiving if you accidentally overcook it. Mm. And of course, it's going to season it, so it tastes really good. And then the best part is that the fat on the skin kind of breaks down a little bit. The skin gets really dry, and then you get, like, super, super crispy, like, shattery skin. And, and what's interesting is that once you dry brine it, you leave it uncovered mm-hmm. in the fridge. Mm-hmm. For how long? A turkey is really, really big, so at least 24 hours, but I think 48 is, like, perfect. Just let it go. Forget about it. Set it and forget Set it. Set it and forget it. There you go. Now, when you when you talk about turkey, you say that, you know, what you start with is what you're going to finish with. So mm-hmm. if you start with a good heritage turkey, you're going to end up with a really tasty turkey. Yeah, I think that you should try and get, like, the best quality turkey that you can afford. They can get expensive. Maybe you need less turkey per person. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be a lot tastier. Um, a lot of those conventional brands are injected with brine, which just means they're plumped up with water. I try and get the best turkey you can find, organic heritage, but you know, you don't have to break the bank, just invite less people. And here's the thing, I think, well, I, I do agree with the invite less people part, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully none of my family is listening. But uh, I, I also think we tend to want to give people a lot. When mm-hmm. they're, they're, it, at Thanksgiving, it's more about the sides than it is, in a Definitely. sense, the turkey. So yeah. you don't need a lot of turkey. No, you don't need a lot. Just try and make sure it's good, yeah. right? I feel like a lot of times the turkey ends up being the most disappointing thing on the table because you get something. You know those turkeys that have, like, the thermometer in it that yeah. pops? Yeah, the pop-up thing. Those are a lie. They, they are. If they only pop at, like, when the turkey is so overcooked, it's like cardboard. Ah, you know, don't 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 waste your time with that. Get the good turkey. Temp it yourself. When I bite into your turkey, it's not only a, a moist and and just juicy and succulent, but it is very flavorful. What what is causing that? It's just because we didn't dilute the flavor. Because mm-hmm. um, we started with the good bird that wasn't injected with brine, and then we didn't do a wet brine. Because a, a lot of recipes tell you to dunk your turkey in this wet brine, which is like water and salt, and your turkey's just gonna absorb water. So this, we're keeping that turkey flavor really, really concentrated, Mm -hmm. and so it just, it tastes more like turkey. Oh, and then there's a secret ingredient, right? The MSG. Ah, the MSG, MSG, which is in the rub. There's a little bit of MSG in the rub. It's, you don't need very much. MSG is one of those things where just a little bit makes a huge difference, and it makes your, your turkey taste more like turkey. It just makes things more savory. So if you're cooking something that's already savory, like tomato sauce or Anything with cheese, any kind of meat, just like a pinch of MSG makes it taste more like itself. Good. A lot of people, because MSG's gotten, in your opinion, a bad rap. Unfairly. Unfairly. All, uh, none of the scientific studies have shown that there's any negative effects from eating MSG. I like science. So you, you shouldn't <laughs> have a big handful of it, but, no. you know, just a little sprinkle. A little sprinkle here little and sprinkle. there. It just makes everything taste better. What are the, what's the one mistake when it comes to the turkey that we make? Hmm, I think cooking it whole. 
-hmm. and putting stuffing in it, trying to get that picture perfect turkey. The stuffing dries it out because all of that flavorful turkey juice just gets absorbed into the stuffing. And then when you cook it whole, it doesn't cook as evenly. When you flatten out your turkey and spatchcock it, what happens is the legs get a little bit more heat just because of just the design. And then your legs need a little bit, little bit more heat. You They're need, going to take longer to cook. They take a little longer to cook. So that way they get a little bit more heat. That connective tissue has a t chance to break down. And your breast, which is in the center, is a little bit more protected. When you cook your turkey whole, the breast is getting all of the heat. Yeah, because it it's up high. Out. It's up high. It's getting all that attention. And it should be like a little bit protected, you know? Wow. I, I, you, you've actually, after t having tasted this, and I, I've been a huge proponent uh, if, if you've listened to this, and there's no reason why you would have, but uh, to to uh, stuff the turkey. I'm a big, I like the stuffing, mm -hmm. and, the, and probably you've now explained why I like the stuffing in the turkey, because it absorbs all the flavor of the turkey. You can make a really tasty stuffing on the side if you get some really good bone broth and just like add it to your stuffing mix. It's going to taste like it was cooked in a turkey. Wow. You can have, you can have it all. You are. Can I have it all? You can, any, we can all have it all, at least one day a year. Okay, that's all I've been asking for. That's all <laughs> I... Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast? Yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Then fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Okay, the gravy. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, when you were adding honey to it, I thought, uh, really? Mm -hmm. And yet again, you have changed my whole preconceived notion of everything that I've come to believe <laughs> about Thanksgiving. So how did you come across the idea of putting honey into your gravy? On my kitchen counter, like my core spices are salt, sugar, MSG, pepper, and honey. Right. Um, a little bit of honey helps round out dishes in a way that, you know, like sugar doesn't do, the honey gives it a nice body. Mm -hmm. It has, honey has like a little bit of natural acidity, so it kind of perks things up and there's that sweetness. But you saw, I didn't go overboard. It's just like a couple of teaspoons mm -hmm. and it really just mellows out all the flavors. Sugar is really important in savory food, the same way you add a pinch of salt to dessert. Mm -hmm. It just helps everything like liven up. It's like, hello. For you growing up so long, what was Thanksgiving? What were, what were your your Thanksgiving memories? Thanksgiving's my favorite day of the year. <laughs> Genuinely, I love Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, my family is Muslim, so we didn't grow up celebrating any of like the conventional holidays like Easter or Christmas or New Year's even because my parents also worked a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, Thanksgiving was the one thing that we did that other people did that made me feel like I fit in. Like, it was the one time of year where I felt like everybody else, which is when you're a kid, that's all you want. Yeah. So I loved it. Um, my mom, when my parents first came to America, my mom worked at a factory and um, one of her coworkers was really great and like really helped us learn about American cuisine. So she um, would have my mom over and they would just like cook together. So one Thanksgiving, she, my mom came over really early and they cooked the whole meal together. Fully like super traditional classic American stuff like the box stuffing, the the gelatin pudding pie, um, 
the everything was like from a box, but it was delicious. And the canned cranberry sauce and all that. And that was the meal that we had almost every single year until I got older and I started to make things from scratch. But yeah, like the, oh, I loved the green bean casserole with the soup from the oh, can. Oh, yeah, and the, and, the, and the French fried onions. French fried onions, yeah. We, we did all the classics, and I loved it because I loved feeling like everyone in the country was, like, doing the same thing. You were sure It was a shared experience. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl! The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. So we're, we're doing this, this, this spatchcocking, and mm -hmm. you are uh, dry brining yes. the turkey. Very important. Why, now, why is that important? So by dry brining, what you're doing is it, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. You're just going to sprinkle salt and whatever else you want on there. And mm -hmm. then what happens is it takes time. As it sits in the fridge, the salt on the surface of the turkey is going to dissolve. And it creates a really concentrated brine with just the salt and the turkey juices that then gets sucked into the turkey. Mm -hmm. And then it does three really cool things. First, obviously, it's going to season it and make it delicious. Right. But it also kind of breaks down some of those muscle fibers, creating a bit of a gel. So it so stays- more tender? It stays, it's really tender, mm -hmm. really juicy, and mm -hmm. there's less worry about overcooking it. It's just gonna be a bit more forgiving. Okay. And then I think the best part about the dry brine is it's gonna dry out the surface of the skin and break down the fat so you get really crispy skin. Crispy, ooh. Crispy. Crispy, all right. I'm very excited about this. So, so what, uh, how do we start? How do we start to prep this? Okay, so first the dry brine. Mm -hmm. So I'm keeping it really, really simple. Okay. It's just salt, yes. a little bit of sugar, that helps with the browning, okay. and a touch of MSG, you know. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's we want a our turkey thing. to taste like turkey. Uh, I mean, please. But you can add spices to this. I like to keep it simple because, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing like a potluck, and you have a bunch of friends coming. Yeah. So now you're going to show us how to smash cock. Yeah, okay. So we've got like a 12 to 14 pound turkey. I think mm -hmm. you don't want to get bigger than that because that's when it starts to cook really unevenly. So if you have a lot of people, make two turkeys. Okay. Yeah. So spatchcock, super easy. We're going to flip this over. Okay. Boom. And we're going to cut out the backbone and then we can open it up and kind of like butterfly it. So I'm just going to use kitchen shears All right. and we're going to do a little snippety. We're going to get through those bones. Okay. You did it! Ah, I need a napkin. I need a towel. <laughs> Don't you feel strong after ah, that? I feel like I'm gonna go rip out a transmission of a car. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna flip it over. Okay. So some people like to remove these uh, wing tips, but mm -hmm. I don't bother because that was already a journey, right? Right. 
So now we're gonna flatten. I gotta take away. I gotta take a break. I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I'm gonna get on top and just flatten the breast. Very important. We're gonna dry off our turkey. So the idea is to reduce as much moisture on the on the surface. Totally. Yeah. So we want to get it. Take your time with this part. I'm gonna pat the cutting board dry because I don't want to lose a bunch of dry brine to the board. Okay. Because it's gonna stick to whatever's wet. And then we're gonna get sprinkling on every inch of this turkey, all over, inside, outside. Let's start with this part, okay. because we're gonna flip it over. So get every single bit, rain it on. We're Make it use, rain. We're gonna use all of this. I know it looks oh. like a lot of salt, mm -hmm. but you need it, it's a very big bird. So some of it's gonna fall off. You wanna pick it up, get it back on there. Every single inch. Now, when you get your turkey in the oven, or mm -hmm. the, we're gonna let this sit in the fridge. Right. And what's gonna happen is initially, it's gonna get really wet because the salt's gonna- Draw out the moisture. Draw out the moisture. That's the first stage. And then if you let it sit, if let it just keep sitting, it's gonna once again, like get really nice and dry once that salt and moisture gets reabsorbed. Now, when you put it in the fridge, uh, should it be uh, skin side up? Skin side up. Breast side up? Breast side up, uncovered. Mm -hmm. And 24 hours minimum, but like oh. ideally 48. So 48. 48 hours. Could you go 72? Yeah, I have. Okay. So, uh, so it obviously, if, if you are planning ahead for Thanksgiving and you've got a frozen bird, you've oh. got to play plan way ahead. Way ahead. Get that bird defrosting a week before Thanksgiving. Now maybe start right after, right after Halloween. Or maybe right after listening to this podcast. Go uh, buy a turkey. There you go. <laughs> now, do you, are, are you... Uh, a bit of a turkey snob, do you, do you have to have a fresh turkey as opposed to a, a frozen turkey? I think that it's important, like the quality of the turkey you start with is really important, so I try to get a heritage breed. Okay, so I like to keep it really simple. Uh -huh. We're just gonna roast it on a bed of these woody herbs. Whatever you've got, pop it on here. Mm -hmm. So you can get crazy, you can put garlic under there, onion, lemon, but I like to keep it real simple so right. that the sides can kind of shine. Okay. And this is gonna hang out in the fridge, okay. uncovered. 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 For one to two days. Yes. And you're gonna take it out. Now, how long do you leave it out mm -hmm. uh, before you put it in the oven? Well, you could just put it in the oven, but I think it comes out so much better mm -hmm. if you let it come to room temperature before you roast it. Because it doesn't have to fight, mm -hmm. the oven doesn't have to fight the coldness. Yeah, exactly, it's not like shocked. Right. So you, I like to let it sit for like three hours. Okay. But then the great news is, because it's spatchcocked and dry brined, we're gonna cook it on high heat, 425, and it only takes like 90 minutes. What? Yeah. Game changer. I know, instead of having your oven blocked up with a turkey for like four hours, you can have time to make your casseroles and your pies and all that, and this just goes in right before you eat. Crazy. I just changed the game. You have. <laughs> Mind blown. All right, uh -huh, so uh -huh. this is in there, and, and while this is in there. Well, before it goes in oh, there. Oh, before it goes there's in there. One more step. One more, one more thing. Step. So we want to brush it with a little bit of fat to help get that crispy, crispy skin. Gotcha. I like to use key, which is butter that has had the milk solid. So clarified butter. Clarified butter, okay. yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna give us all the flavor of butter, but mm -hmm. it has a higher smoke point, so it's gonna get really crispy as if we were using oil. Wow. All right. Magic. In the oven. In the oven. 425, 90 minutes. 90 minutes. While that's happening, we've got more stuff happening here. Yes. Well, okay, so gravy. Gravy. A lot of people make the gravy with the drippings. Yes. But I actually don't because there's a lot of people around the house. There's right. so many things happening. Mm -hmm. Gravy is an easy thing to get done like a couple days before. Do it ahead of time. Get it out of the Knock way. Knock it out. Knock it out. And then the drippings, I like to save as a special treat for the next day. Listen to this. You take those drippings. Right. You're going to take your leftover turkey, fry them in the drippings, wow. and make turkey carnitas tacos. My gosh. Right? Where have you been all my life? <laughs> So the gravy you're gonna make a few days before. Okay. Uh, if you wanna be extra, take that backbone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just, you got Oh, you didn't mean take it. Sorry, right. now. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> take that backbone. I'm a very literal person. Yeah. So. Well, I'm what, sorry. What you can do is take that backbone, uh -huh. roast it up in some fat, uh -huh. maybe roast up your giblets, mm -hmm. and then cook that with some broth and a bunch of veggies to make it really, really flavorful, which okay. is what we've done already. Right. So this is a broth that's like, amped up. It's like turned up. We've got, it's like got- Like broth on steroids. Boom, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's like broroids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so then once we have your broth, we're gonna make our gravy. Gravy keeps. N nothing bad is gonna happen to this if you make it a few days early, so just really? go for it. Okay. 
So you got some butter in here. Starting with some butter. Okay. We're gonna make a really simple roux, mm -hmm. thicken up our gravy. So we're gonna melt our butter until it's nice and foamy, and then I'm gonna add some flour. You wanna wait until it gets foamy, because okay. then the butter is hot enough to like, you know, evenly absorb the flour and you don't have any lumps. That's why you end up with lumps. If you just dump the flour in right ah. now, the lump, if you make lumps early, yes. you're gonna have lumps the whole time. Lumps, lumps are forever. Lumps are forever, okay. so you just make sure you don't start with any lumps. No. Okay, so we got foamage, so now my flour foamage. is getting in. We had foamage. And we just want this to get like, it's gonna get foamy again and mm -hmm. blonde. You don't wanna, you don't wanna overcook the roux at this point, cause, but this is really it. That's all. That's, it? That's, as, that's as far as you need to take okay. it. Okay. And now we're gonna add our broth a splash at a time. Now, okay, you know Jacques Pepin, the legendary yes. chef? He can add the broth all at once and not end up with lumpy gravy. But I'm not Jacques Pepin, you're That's not right. Jacques Pepin. No, 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 nobody is Jacques No Pepin. one listening Except is Jacques, Jacques Pepin. Pepin. Right. I think you should add it a tablespoon at a time and just make sure you're lump free. It's almost like you're, you're making a gravy risotto. Uh-huh. And then once you add all of this liquid, you need to make sure it simmers for a few minutes to lose that raw, flowery taste. Otherwise, you can like, you can taste it. You're like, ooh. You know? Yeah. It's gonna be a little weird and starchy. Now, this, everything here has been pretty simple. We've yes. just got like salt, herbs, but you can like get crazy here if you want. You could add some, I don't know, chipotle peppers. Mm -hmm. Get make a spicy gravy to Ooh. go with your southwestern barbecue turkey. Very nice. You know, I just like I want to give you a basic like outline so people can get home and and now we're gonna season it up. I'm gonna keep it really simple, a little bit of time. Okay a little black pepper. We're gonna add salt to taste. Now, um, a lot of, if you're using like a store-bought broth, it probably has a good bit of salt. So make sure you mm -hmm. taste it before you get crazy because it might the, be good. The fat, the butter you used, would you use salted or unsalted? I always use unsalted because okay. okay. I want full control. Okay. You know? So you can always add salt, but once the salt's in there. It's over. You're done. Game over, yeah. Forget it. Okay, and then I like a touch. Wow, honey. Of honey. I, I was referring to that, not you. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's. Crazy. Well, I think that I love a little bit of sweetness uh -huh. on the Thanksgiving table because I grew up with the cranberry sauce from the can. Yeah, who didn't? Yeah, so this kind of gives me that sweetness in a different way. Mm. And also, so when I'm sad, the my sad food, my husband makes this for me, is mashed potatoes with this honey gravy. So now it's like my favorite thing. Oh my gosh. He's a and lovely it's so man. sweet that you have a husband who makes you uh, food to lift you out of your sadness. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. Okay, so then make this in advance. Uh -huh. um, so the giblets, my mom always used the giblets, always, either in the stuffing or the gravy. So what I did was, the day you get your turkey all dry brined, sear them off that day while they're nice and fresh. A uh. little bit of salt mm -hmm. in a little bit of butter, um, nicely chopped up, and then you, on the day of Thanksgiving, you can either add it to your gravy, which is what I'm gonna do, or you can um, add it to your stuffing, that's also really tasty. Oh, that's interesting. But if you don't like giblets, don't eat them. No. But at least give them to the dogs. The dog likes the giblets. dog loves the well, giblets, you know? I love the giblets. I do too. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Go! What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Over here is our... Uh... Our lovely finished bird? Yes, yeah, so after your bird comes out of the oven, uh -huh. you gotta let it rest. Right, how long? At least 
at least 20 minutes, un uncovered, because if you cover it, it's gonna get steamy and you're gonna lose that crispy skin. Uh. But it's okay for like 40 minutes if you have other things you need to do. Mm -hmm. And like while while it waits, I think we can like get dressed up, you know? Oh. Prepare, right? We can dress up just like the turkey. The turkey doesn't have to have all of the fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. By spatch conking it, mm -hmm. is it easier to carve? Because so a lot, much of, easier. a lot of people have, including myself, have butchered a good turkey. That makes it so hard. It's easier to just remove the whole breast and then work with the pieces on your cutting board. So you're gonna take when your turkey is like out of the oven, mm -hmm. take it to your guests, let them revel in the glory. Behold! Behold! We have spatch cocked this for you. Yeah, and then bring it back into the kitchen, and we're gonna carve. Mm -hmm. Now carving's not so hard. Just start with the pieces that are the most in the way. I'm gonna get rid of these wings. We're not actually cutting through any bones, so the turkey is so nice and tender. We're just really easily, you see it's like butter. Just like that. We're just coming right through the joints. So the leg immediately just beautifully came off, right? That's amazing. Just make the turkey work for you. You don't even have to like know what you're doing here. You can just rip off the pieces. Look at this. Bone. And then we just work our way along this breastbone to remove the meat right off the breast. You can see these ribs right here? Mm -hmm. Just move along the ribs and just slice them right off. Easy peasy, anyone can do this. Okay, so now we have this beautiful boneless breast. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to do this crazy carve with it right. on, we just go across just and we get it. Like beautiful. it's a like it's a, a like a, a, a loin. Exactly, and now everyone gets a little bit of skin. That's why I love cutting the turkey this way. Yeah. Everybody gets some crispy skin. The meat is so tender and juicy. I wish they could just breed a turkey that's just made of skin. We're probably gonna get there soon. Yeah. They'll probably figure out how to make it plant based. Just a plant based uh, skin. Wow. The mind boggles. Yeah. Okay. Look so at that. Got a couple of nice slices. Ugh. Boom. That looks nice, that right? That's fantastic. That's, a, that's like sandwich ready. Yeah, it is. And which is the best part, the next day sandwich? Yeah. I like that more than the actual meal. I do too. You want a little dark meat? Of course. So I like to debone the dark meat too, so that, you know, it's not just going to that one person who gets the leg first. Right. We're gonna flip this over, and the bone is right here. We're gonna run our knife right, right along the bone, mm -hmm. and you just, just gently like peel that skin right off the bone. The meat is really tender, so once we get around here, it'll just slip right out. Flip it over. Wait, keep the skin intact. This is the most important part. Ah. No one's watching, right? No, no, they're just no. listening. They're just listening. All right, and I'm getting, so you can see I've, I've pulled the bone out of here, mm -hmm. and now we just lose it. Boom. Bang. Boom, and then we can flip this over and get really nice, thick slices of dark meat as well. See, I've never seen the dark meat sliced. Why the hell not? Make it easier for your guests, you know? Yeah, it's all about the guests. I usually just slice up half the turkey, mm -hmm. one leg, one breast, right. and then um, try to save the rest for myself for later. God. You know what I mean? That's the trick. Okay, we got nice thick slices of dark meat. All right, do you have a preference, dark or light? I'm, I'm more of the dark meat, but, but, Me but I will say this, this uh, breast meat. Not bad. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I think so too. It's that MSG. Don't be scared, guys. Okay, a little gravy. Mm -hmm. And we are ready for to dine. Little giblets. That looks pretty Look good. Yeah, right? You can make this. Anyone can make this. And, and I think that it's great because you can get as creative as you want with the flavors. Just think about this as a technique demonstration. This is doing weird things to my hair. <laughs> go in for the dark meat. That's what I'm doing. That's my move. That's my favorite bit. That's your jam. That's my jam. A little bit of skin, a little bit of giblet. Whoa. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts.
October 25th. This is not any Monday, okay? This is not just any Monday. This is Monday, October the 25th. This is the Monday that our crew, our staff, our awesomeness is here. I've got Manon. I've got Brian in the house. They have not been here since when? March 2020? Why are you not speaking? <laughs> we forgot. We forgot how this March 2020. Okay, so I just want a question because some people are coming back to work for the first time. So, Manon, let me ask you. You yes. walk in the door and you have not been here since March 2020. You walk into Sirius XM first time. And what was it like? Little spooky. Yeah. A little bit spooky, but weirdly comforting because it was exactly the same, you know, besides all the people. (laughs) But I love when you see just one person that you haven't seen Seen in ages. How are you doing? Like, it's like no time has passed. It's bizarre. It's weird to have like face to face contact with people who you've worked with for years and years and you haven't seen them in forever. Where there was a like, I, I saw know. Holly in the kitchen. I was like, hi. Oh, you haven't even seen each other? You well, I Holly? saw like the back yeah. of her head and I was like, is that her? Holly. <laughs> I did one of those. Is that, I know. Brian, <laughs> how was it? It's a little bit of like a back to school feeling, but <laughs> yeah. in like a very weird way. <laughs> weird way. How was your desk? Was, did you, was it uh, just as you left it? The little bamboo plant I had is no longer there. It's Aww. no longer with It's very unfortunate, but otherwise pretty much the same. Isn't it weird? You know what, guys? I had this strange out of body. I was actually walking down the street uh, the other day. And it was as if, you know, before masks, like it was as if I had landed from Mars on planet Earth and wondered what had happened. There was like a two year old with a mask on. All these people have their masks on. They're they're putting them on before they go into the CVS. It's almost like without fail, you reach in your pocket and grab it. Haley, before we step into any building is like, where's my mask? It's like. And I just thought, oh, my God, if you had been like Rapunzel, who's the one who sleeps? Rapunzel? Sleeping Beauty, whoever, (laughs) if you're one of those ones who sleeps for a long, long time and you woke up and you got out of bed and you walked out and looked to see what was going on. I mean, it was so I had one of those crazy things. And the other thing I thought of and I thought of this yesterday, I went to visit my mom and my sister with the kids and it was a road trip to Rehoboth. And then on the way home, you know, we, we have car sickness things and there was lots going on. Anyway, there was a lot happening. And when I got home uh, with all these bags of stuff, snacks, my mom always packs us so much food and it was just seemed like a lot of stuff to do and change the kids and bathe them and all that. And I was just thinking for a second as I sat there, like everything is fleeting. Like this is fleeting. This is a fleeting moment. And to sit with it in it and remember it. And just before I came over here, I was talking to a friend of mine named Monica And she told me, which I did not know, that her mom passed in September. And I didn't know that because so many people have passed over this time. And we hadn't spoken in a while. And she said to me, I want you to tell you something. Everything's fleeting. And I said, my God, I was just feeling that. And she said, "Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, my mom lived to 87 or 86. And that's how how old her mother was. And she said... Um, if I had a do-over, I would listen to her stories all over again and not complain. I would listen to them again and again, you know, and you're like, I already heard that. Okay, okay. You know how all kids are, all no matter if you're grown or not with your parent. But she said, if I had it all to do over, and she said, the other thing is, the eulogy I read to her, I would have written her it in a letter form and read it, read it to her when she was around. And I thought, isn't that such a beautiful thing and sometimes you forget because you get caught up in the anxiety of uh oh the kids or uh oh my parents or uh you know all the uh uh-ohs and she said just do that and it reminded me of what that rabbi who we spoke to a while ago said the rabbi leader who I love he said find someone you love write them a letter and go to their house and read it just go to their house and read it read it to them and tell them You know, and when you read this written word, it's different than just going up and saying, I just want to tell you I love you. They'll be like, I love you too, sweetie. Bye. You know, but this is like to really write down your thoughts and have them down. So anyway, I was just reflecting. I was just thinking, wow, isn't that funny? All the things that we complain about and you realize everything's fleeting. It's just for a minute. Our kids are only going to be this age for so long. They're only going to be in college for so long. They're only going to be young adults or, you know, or parents or whatever it is. Anyway. I thought that was uh, an interesting thing. Do you? (laughs) 
Is it too much? Sometimes I'm too much. It's too much. No, it's too I much. agree with you. you I do. thought about my mom immediately yeah. because I actually thought the other day that I wanted to tell mm-hmm. her, yeah. like I was like thinking about like she was always the type of mom who like would drive you no matter what. Like she'd pick me up at like three o'clock in the morning, oh. no, no complaints, like two hours away. And I was wow. like, a lot of people didn't have didn't a have mom who would like go and she'll still do it. She'd be like, still what time? It. Where? <gasps> four o'clock in the morning. She'll, she'll I'll just, be there. Yeah, she'll always be there to do it. And I thought of that in my head when you said that. (laughs) That's so funny. And when you just said that, I was remembering my brother and I delivered the Washington Post when we were kids. And the Washington Post, on Sundays especially, was so heavy you couldn't carry but five in your bag because they weighed a ton. Picture those all those dark drug ads and all that junk that was stuffed in the papers. So my mom, every morning, would take the station wagon and drop papers off on the curbs, on the corners, so that we would have five in our bag, we would give distribute them, and then on the next corner, we'd pick up the next five and distribute those, and then the next five. So she she woke up because we had to have them delivered by five or whenever it was in the morning, six in the morning, and she did that. It's like moms who go above and beyond and do all that kind of stuff. And you're right. Sometimes we just forget about it. We're just going on our merry way. By the way, you know who I love? Cheryl Crow. I love me some Cheryl Crow. Do you know that Cheryl Crow's turning 60 years old? She's turning 60. She's got two beautiful kids, uh, 11 and 14, and um, she's about to have a big birthday. And she was saying that if she was told today that she could never, ever make music again, ever, and that's her, obviously one of her big, huge passions, she said she would be just as happy because of the family that she created. And she said when she was with Lance Armstrong, she uh, didn't want to be a s- stepmom and, and a girlfriend. She said she didn't want to be a babysitter and not a mother. She didn't want to have the mothering part of her. Uh, she didn't have that, that piece. And she said her mother, who she thought was very old-fashioned, said to her, well, then why don't you just have babies on your own. She was like, mom? Because she, her mom, she thought was old school. You got to have the exact family unit in order to have a child. And she said like the lights went on in her house and she ended up adopting these kids and taking this path. And to think that someone said, if someone took away the thing that's most, that's very important to you artistically, professionally, and you would still be equally as happy because she says she gets to, you know, raise these incredible kids. And I just thought she's just got such insight. And plus, you don't really hear much about Cheryl Crow's other life. You just hear, you know, she's a great musician. You know, she's seems a lot of fun, but you don't hear about her parenting and her choices. And she said, she, and she's got a big milestone birthday. I mean, 60 is a milestone. And she was giggling about it. Like, oh, God, don't say it. Don't say it, Hoda. But she was, you know, she was feeling she was feeling good about it. I feel like I feel like milestones can can really get you if you're not careful you know they can we got a we got a <laughs> we got a big show today we've got william shatner with us and we got tay diggs people really don't know what's going to happen really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore <laughs> Some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, I'm All right, it just fits. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on today. 
people really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Oh, no. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fit too. Hi, Oda, aren't you the busy lady? Well, well Mr. Shatner, how, how are you? you? Oh, my God, oh my we've, God gone we've gone, gone where there. no man has gone before. We're going to work on that. There you are. No, it's all, good. it's all good. Echo is good. I like it. So um, let me ask you a question. You, It would have been two weeks ago tomorrow that you were up in space. Has that, like, have you had time to reflect on that? Uh, uh, yeah, I was reflecting uh, moonlight, sunlight uh, for the... <laughs> I've been reflecting it for a long time. Uh, Hoda, it was the experience of a lifetime. Uh, it, 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 it to talk about it in you know I've been out on in in um, in public these last couple of weeks doing things and they say you know what's it like in space or no the one I get is uh, how was space <laughs> so what are you going to say there are no words to say it so I've cut my answer down to saying. How is space? Empty. And uh, <laughs> that, I mean, uh, otherwise I launch into, well, let me tell you about <laughs> the English language and its inability to express uh, new experiences because there aren't words to describe it. The word horse came into uh, the vocabulary 10,000 years ago. So archaeologists believe that horses came into, into human uh, association about 10,000 years ago. We don't know the words for weightlessness and, uh, and uh, in space, uh, yet there's no English words invented for it. But did, was it true, Bill, that your family was like, look... Honey, don't go up. Don't go up in the. Don't go up in the ship. They, 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 they didn't even say the word honey. <laughs> Are you out of your mind, you idiot? <laughs> no, yeah, they were against it. I've shot a documentary about it all, and it should be great fun because I've interviewed a lot of people uh, on it, and they, you know, they were in the midst of a earth shaking. Uh, activity for all of us, the the other astronauts and the people associated with it. I mean, you're risking life. You're like, you remember the Hindenburg? Yeah. Right? Ah, the humanity of it all, and they're, and they're running, and they're, that was hydrogen. Wow. And and they're putting hydrogen into this vehicle that I'm sitting with my back. I'm sitting lying down, thinking, oh, the humanity of it all, and they're putting <laughs> hydrogen in it. What kind of conversations were you having with your crew members when you were going on the way up? Or could you have conversations? Couldn't have quite a word. No, I yeah. mean, you know, it's, uh, I mean, what kind of a conversation do you have when you're sitting in the electric chair? You know, so how's, how's it going? You know, <laughs> no, wait, 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 before you pull the switch, I want to tell you about what I had for dinner. Oh, was that awful? What kind of a restaurant? Boom. <laughs> it was raw fish. Now it's cooked, you fool. I mean, <laughs> what can you say? You're there with your mouth agape and you're going through uh, a 5G year, and your face is, uh, and you want to have a conversation. No. What, right. what they wanted to do was in weightlessness to play some games like weightlessness. Mm -hmm. And I had vowed because, um, uh, there had been another team prior to our show. Jeff Bezos had gone up, and they had played around with weightlessness, and all, and all I wanted to do was look out the window. So sure. I said, "You guys do whatever you're going to do. I'm I'm uh, I'm looking out the window." Were you surprised, Bill? Um, look, I know everybody knows you as Captain Kirk from Star Trek, but were you surprised at the level, the astronomical level of interest? Like you made headlines. I guess. I, I mean, guess. come on. You we did three Today Show stories on you. Before you even Oda, took off? I'm telling you, when it was uh, 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 
Jason Ehrlich is the name of the young man, uh, producer, director, who said, you know, we sh you should go and we'll get uh, Blue Origin two years ago. And I said, nobody's interested in me. No, no, we'll go. So we went up to Seattle and it turned out that Jeff Bezos wanted to go himself first. So they went. So I said to to him, uh, you know, so there you are. It's all over. They said, no. he said, no, maybe the second. I said, no, what? So they invited me on the second. So I thought, you know, second is like vice president. <laughs> Who wants? You know, you want to talk to the president. You don't want to talk to the vice president necessarily, although she's a lovely lady. Uh, uh, so I said, no. Nah. Then I thought the thrill mm -hmm. of risking, and there is a risk. I mean, you know, they, it is safe. Blue Origin is absolutely safe as anything, you know, driving on the freeway. It's safer than driving on the freeway. But even driving on the freeway has a risk. Mm -hmm. You know how to say you for kids getting on. If you have a child driving for the first day, you know, be careful. Drive close and keep your attention because there's a risk. Mm -hmm. So I'm lying there, uh, the, and uh, and uh, and I'm hearing the humanity of it all, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking there's a risk here, and uh, and so I. Uh, but being I thought, second, you were okay with being second. That, well, that I was okay cool. with having the thrill. Yeah. Yeah. You know I had been, two months earlier, I had been 60 feet underwater with tiger sharks having another thrill. So, I mean, I, I guess in my latter stages of my life, I want to taste life to the fullest could by you, talking to you. Could you even <laughs> imagine that after being on Star Trek for those seasons, and this this shocked me. I wonder if this is true. I mean, I we read it in a, in a few different places, but... It says that after you, after Star Trek had, had run its course, you couldn't find work. It says here that you didn't have much money, no, not really any acting prospects. In this and album you just played, yeah, uh, called Bill, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we wrote a number of songs, all based on personal experience, like Guilty. You know, I feel guilty singing this song, and we we wrote a song called So Far from the Moon. Um, which is me looking at the astronauts in that period of time. I was divorced. Mm -hmm. I was broke. I was doing summer stock. I was living in a camper or the thing because I, I had reached the bottom of my life shortly after Star Trek. And, and then 55 years later, I'm closer to the moon than you were. Oh my word. Uh, the, the, the circuitousness of life, uh, uh, struck me, and so we wrote a song. So far from the moon. So far and from that, the moon. That was the that was the truth back then. By the way, that's unbelievable to me to think that after that wild success of Star Trek, that somehow you were broke and living in a camper. Yeah. How how yeah. was that? I mean, did they not pay you enough? Like, what okay. happened? Divorce. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I have three children and putting you know, uh, the uh, it's not an unusual story. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, um, you know, trying to get back on your feet, how did you during that time? I worked hard. Yeah. Yeah. At what, like what, what ended up being? Oh, I, I, I've never done anything else but be an actor, but I wrote, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I sang, I, I was on stage for 13 weeks on that summer tour. I did that three or four three or four years in a row. I staged those plays. Wow. I slept in a in a camper. I I sent money home. And then gradually, you know, in those days, I don't know about it now, and I don't think it applies now, but in those days, when you came off a series, you were well known for that series role. And it mm -hmm. took a while to get uh, for people to hire you again. And um, and th I think that's what was happening uh, to get movie and television roles. Wow. So I went out on to where I would come from, to the stage, and made a living there. Well, this album uh, called Bill, you have some really cool duets. You've got Joe Jonas, you've got Brad Paisley. So did you pick people you liked and called them up and said, hey, yep. uh, will you join me? How, so yeah. how, did you, how did you come up with this list of, of people? Well, there's a poem. There is a... I don't know whether it's spoken word or music. It's it's kind of somewhere in between, and I'm not quite sure where it is, and I'm only learning now how to deal with it because saying a word and singing a word is quite different. You can sing love and have that extended note, and it means mm -hmm. love, but how do you do love with the same, mm -hmm. same uh, passion? So I needed musicians who had that feeling, 
And, um, and so uh, there, there's a wonderful uh, song, I like to characterize it that way, uh, called uh, The Black Horse or The Dark Horse, whatever we called it. And it's about uh, this beautiful animal that I had. And mm. I thought, you know, a string quartet needs to go with this. So we mm. found a great string quartet. Mm. So, mm. and, th and then this here, I wrote a song about loneliness. How, what loneliness is in that? And, and the last line is, will there be anybody there at the end? And mm. you, we needed a, 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 an, a, an instrument that I wanted Yo-Yo Ma to mm. play. That for the mm. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, but we got this wonderful guy to play this great instrument to to echo loneliness, and it's a it's a it, the album bill has received better notices than anything I've ever done. It is spectacular, and it's doing so well, and I'm so proud of it. And we're waiting with uh, anticipation that the label picks up the option so we can write another album because we've got half of it written already. Well, you said that uh, before you went up to space, you were swimming in the depths of the ocean. So do you have something that's next uh, on your list of things to do? Well, I've been up there and I've been yeah. down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had the thrill of talking to you. So, I mean, what else is there? <laughs> Bill Shatner, uh, thank you so much for hanging with us today. Uh, again, you can find his spoken word album. It's called Bill. It's out now wherever you stream your music. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, and we'll see you uh, on the Today Show soon again, I'm sure. I hope so. Take All right. care. Take care. Bye, Thanks Bill. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? Some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just me kind of guest I love to have on my show is someone who tells the truth. And that Ooh. is why I like my next guest. Tay Diggs is somebody who when he comes on the show, he always tells you just like it is. He never is. I don't know. I always feel like like someone's taking truth serum when Tay shows up. So I'm excited to have Tay Diggs here. Tay, first of all, can I just say, I know it's radio, but I can see you and you are styling. Tell me, well, no, I need you. to know. We got, I'm just for people who are listening in the car, red suspenders, cool neon hat, a big chunk yes. of bracelets, an ET, wait, no, does that say ET or jet? I can't see. It's a jet, jet yes. baby, yeah. jet t-shirt. Come on. I mean, tell me, were you always a stylish kid? Um, I was always a poor kid so that when I started um, making a little bit money, a little bit of money. I, I made sure I, I, uh, I tried to dress like I had always imagined. I wanted to dress when I was just a poor boy growing up. So that that uh, 
I'm, I'm still working through a lot of that in therapy. <laughs> you know what? That's interesting because I, I think that there, I have, a, I have, I know a few people I'm close with who are dealing with a very similar feeling. So sure. when you were in school and you feel like you, when you were a kid and you didn't have what the other kids had, how did you react to that situation? What did you do? You know, I was just, I was just funny. You should, funny you should ask. I was just discussing this with, uh, with my son and my a really good friend of mine who also works with me uh, about what uh, how to kind of manifest things. And today that 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 word is is thrown around so so often. Um, but I was explaining to my son that uh, I think I manifested things when I was younger, even before I knew what it was. Because if if we didn't have something, we would me and my family we would imagine having it. And I think one of the main things in, in manifesting is feeling what it would feel like if you had it. And that's literally how we would just get through life. Do you know what I mean? Like if we were driving to church in our old jalopy, we would imagine we were in the Corvette that we just said, okay, that's mine, that's mine, that's my white Corvette. And then we would imagine that we were riding in that Corvette. And that I think is literally what what kind of draws draws that that's that that other energy that receiving energy back to you so so now that that, that i have a little bit of money i think i think that's that's what happened and i, mm. and I think that that's uh, that's how people can, can still oh my it. gosh by the way that's brilliant um it's so funny that you're saying that because i had, i interviewed um tyler perry a while ago and he said something um that struck me he said he was you know he was he was living in new orleans my a city my city that i love so much and he said he was going through hell basically and he said he remembered like hiding under the porch, you know, so he wouldn't get hurt by any of his family members. And he was always imagining a better life. And then he said he would walk into houses that had for sale signs. Yeah. Houses. Cause he said he wanted to see where he was going to live or he would yeah. go to the car lot and get behind the wheel of a good car. So he could see the car he was going to drive. And it does happen. Sure. Um, but yeah. in that moment, when you're a kid though, Tay, you can imagine those things, but how did you deal with it? like on Monday or on Tuesday or on Wednesday when you just had to go to school? Well, it, it, it was, it was life. And we were so uh, it's, and this is where I feel blessed. I, it's like, you don't, you don't know you're poor mm. until somebody else tells you. So we didn't know we had it awful. We just could see what, what, what the other side was like. You know what I mean? So we didn't know what it was like to feel rich, but it didn't feel bad to feel poor like I, I we weren't inside those those people's lives yeah we just, it would be cool to be in this car our car was just our car you know, there yeah. was like yes. life and then there was what we could only imagine white people's lives were like you know what i mean yeah. um yeah. we didn't come back you know oh this is old but it wasn't until i started going to private school <laughs> you know seeing what other people's lives were really like yeah and then coming back to my home being like oh wow and then that's when, you know, the kind of the downside of that where Got you, you really, you don't, you stop fantasizing and you just start craving, you know what I mean? And start working mm. for, you know, for other reasons, as opposed to just the, uh, the love of the craft. Boy, that's interesting. Start, stop fantasizing yeah. and start craving. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. <laughs> that was amazing. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> Some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses, by the man who never did. All right, it just me too. 
Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Your, um, your mom's a teacher and an actress. Did she always tell you you could? She, I always did. Mm-hmm. And then once I did, she said, keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a, the downside where whenever I was really proud of something, she would say, well, I, I, I always knew you were going to be great. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, so I, I didn't hear, um, um, I didn't hear her say actually that she was so moved by a performance that I had done until I did this show called um, Hedwig, Hedwig and the Angry mm-hmm. Ant, where I had to play a trans uh, character with heels and full makeup and the wigs. And um, it was it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And then I remember that moment. It was it was it was um, it was before she passed. But I, 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 I will never forget. That was one of the moments when she actually said from, you know, I heard her audibly say that 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 was an amazing performance and that I had, um, you know, uh, gone beyond of what she had ever expected. So it was, it was a good note, a good note to, to, to go out on. Oh my word. Yeah. Profound when you hear that, when you, isn't it funny that someone can feel something and just maybe not verbalize it. Yeah. And one time I, they say it out loud. I understood it, but, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I remember that when I, um, when I'm talking to my son, because I think, my son can do no wrong. But I, even though I feel that way, I always make sure that I tell him and he hears it because it's two different things. What someone feels and then what the other person hears. hears. And so much so much can get lost in between there. And it can really it can really mess up people's lives if, if they don't hear it. Sounds hear like it and feel it. And feel it. Yeah. it sounds like you have real grown up conversations with your son when you were talking about manifesting. I mean, that's oh. he's twelve, right? Yeah. See an old soul? Yeah, if he, yes, yes, he's, uh, he, he teaches, I mean, it's a cliche to, 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 to hear, to hear it, but he really does, he really does teach me from, from just like, mostly when it comes to my personal life, like we had a full on conversation. We're watching the, um, oh, it's so much fun. We're watching, um, old, um, seasons of The Bachelor just to, to make fun of people. And we really, it's, it's, those, those shows are, uh, it's, it's the you can really look at what how human people behave you know how yeah. human people behave in relationships and um how comfortable they feel on camera and just mm-hmm. the dynamics between men and women and even the host and 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 we just we dissect it all and and my little man is right right on point you know what i mean he'll tell me how why he knows this girl is nervous because of the way she she left the lemon the limousine and the this crick in her what? hip Yes, it's 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 hilarious. He he's really with it. He's really with it. Wow, wow. Does he look at dad and say does he aspire to be kind of in in Hollywood or in on Broadway or anything like that? Not, oh, at least not now. Not now. I know he's terribly talented because he'll do imitations of all these characters on The Bachelor <laughs> and he's spot on. But he's uh he's 150% into basketball. Mm. Basketball. So that's that's all he wants to do. Can you believe that this boy, this young man, this wonderful soul is yours, that you created this this. I mean, that just blows me away when you talk yeah. about what he's like. Yeah, it, especially now when I'm looking at all the uh, his baby pictures, because that's 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 I, I can't I literally cannot um, grasp or wrap my mind around the fact that they start this size and then not. <laughs> They're this size and it's going to get even bigger. And, and I feel the same. I feel the same. That's, that's where it gets you is that you, I don't feel any different. Yeah. But he, he is proof that time is time has passed. So it's a trip.
And I was just saying, we were starting the show by talking about how everything's fleeting. It's like I was, I have these two uh, little girls who I adopted, Tay, one's almost five and one's going to be three. And you blink and everything is fleeting. And even like I was saying, we were, you know, it was a, a busy time and the kids weren't feeling well and all this, we had to unpack. It was like all this stuff was happening. And then you realize in a second, I spoke to a friend about it and she said, Hoda, if I could have that moment back like wiping my kid off, unpacking a car, I would do it in, in a second, in a second. Yeah. So, you know, while you're thinking like, wow, what a tough day it was, just, you know, remember that someone's wishing for that day. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. It's, it's just the way the world is. I wish there was a pill you could take that makes you feel like that. Because even when somebody, let's be honest, even when somebody tells you that, mm -hmm. it doesn't change how it feels. You can make change. It may make you a little less upset, yeah. but it's still annoying. You know what I mean? And that's <laughs> the way it's like, like it never really works. It just helps you get through that moment. But, you know, if I'm yelling at my kid, I'm like, oh, could you imagine if he wasn't OK? But I'm still mad at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, by the way, you know. our entire crew in here is laughing because you're speaking truth again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I was speaking in okay. fantasy, and you were you finally just got real. You were like, "No, you're still ticked uh, at your kid." Okay, I don't care how many uh, people tell you it's fleeting. Like it's still annoying. It's all get out. <laughs> you're right. You are right. You are right. Okay, uh, you've got season four of your hit show, All American, on CW. Does uh does your son watch that, or you think it's too grown up? No, no, no. It's not. Well, I don't know if it's too grown up. But but we definitely watch it together, and we have uh, we have major discussions about it. So um so I'm very I feel very lucky because because he's 12, I'm 50, so I'm way past being cool, and he's just entering being the coolest. So I'm holding on to any of these moments that I can where we we can share the same room, and I can hold my head up high. You know what I mean? <laughs> did you say Did you say you were 50? I'm 50. Yes. How yes. was that? <laughs> How is uh, that milestone, different. babe? We all know it's we we we're all, we're all doing okay. We're all doing all right. Did did it's different, it's different did, these did, it hit, did it hit you hard fifty or was it was it just Thursday? It, it's other people. It, it's other people that um that make a big deal. I, you know, um, after my kid, I just lost track of just time. Period. Um, so you know, I, I keep I kept hearing the numbers. And I, I I do this every ten years. If if I'm about, if I'm 49, I'm about to be 50. All during 49, I'll tell myself I'm 50. I did that at 39 for 40, so that I gave myself a whole year to say I was 50. So that it, then it was cool. <laughs> but it's when everybody else is like, "No, you're not. No, you're not." And I'm like, "I am." If you could talk to my knees and my back, they would tell you. But I'm I'm 50. <laughs> does it does it seem like forever ago? When from the movie uh, when How Stella got her groove back because I watch that every time it comes on TBS or whatever channel it's on. I'm old enough where I can't, or I almost don't believe that that's me. It looks like somebody else is. Well, that's a who's 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 cute son is that? <laughs> somebody somebody should tell that guy he should be an actor. It's <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I don't even I, I don't even recognize myself. Like it's it's crazy. Um, do you, are you one of those guys with a bucket list? Do you have something that's next either acting wise or in your, in your personal life? Um, I want to be a superhero. I still want to play a superhero. Okay. Still want to be in a big major, uh, movie musical so that I can, so that I can stop and start again and stop and take rests. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I want to do some kind of a dance, something with my son, um, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but but those those are the those are the those are the only things. Like you know, performance wise. Well, I mean, I know that your mom's favorite was Hedwig, but uh, I'm a rent I'm a rent person, and <laughs> you and there's no there's nothing nothing like Tay Diggs and Rent nothing, and I can attest to that. So, um, hey Tay, I want to tell yeah. everyone to make sure that they check out season four of your hit show All American. It's on the CW. It premieres tonight all the best to you and your adorable Thanks. son man you're such a good dad I you're try. such a good dad sometimes thank you though. all right tay have a great one okay all right you as well take okay care. take care we'll be back on the hoda show right after this make the most of your day with today all day get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way today in 30 we give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes <laughs> Boom. Boom. That's just 
Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the storm, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man who never All right, it just me to the Hoda show um Tay Diggs man what a he is he is like truth serum I mean sometimes it just it just strikes me like he just says it there are certain people you talk to it's like they swallowed a truth pill and blurted out all their business and I mean that's tough even with friends I think sometimes to be able to tell the truth he was basically talking about how um just how he how he parents, how he lives, how he talks to his kid, how they watch The Bachelor. I mean, I love, I, I, can you, I mean, how funny. They sit together, watch The Bachelor, and analyze. Tay Diggs is analyzing The Bachelor and why they pick certain women and what, what vibe women are giving off or men are giving off. That is so wild. That is just wild. Um, and speaking of relationships, I did an interview with um, Ian Levan Zant, who's an incredible life coach. And she has this life that to me is like one for the books because, you know, the story of rock bottom and turning around is really one of my f f favorite life stories because most people I interview who I'm in love with have had that. William Shatner, who we just spoke to, spoke briefly about how after Star Trek, after the heart of, I mean, the, the height of stardom, after he was iconic, a first, you know, he was like on the lips of every person. Um, and after that show was canceled, he, he is Captain Kirk, he couldn't get work. He couldn't get work. He went through a divorce. He couldn't pay his bills and was living in a camper. That's what he was doing. And I asked how he got out of it. And he said, I worked hard. That's what I did. I worked hard and did whatever I could. So you know how you automatically assume that people are on top of the world and you don't realize the hell that they've been through? I interviewed um, Ian Levan Zant, and she talked about how she was at the lowest point in her life, the lowest, like in an abusive relationship with children, had no money, had nothing, zero, zero. And her husband got so violent one night that she snuck her kids out in the night, in the dark of night and ran to the subway just to run away. And she said that she was sitting there in the subway with her kids and she wanted a cigarette and she wanted a subway token for, the, for her and the kids. And she was sitting there all by herself and had nothing with her because she didn't have time to grab anything. And a guy walked up and he said, what do you need? And she said, I need a subway token and a cigarette. And the guy gave it to her. And she took the subway token smoked the cigarette and went to uh, a shelter and ended up putting herself through law school and becoming, a, you know, getting on Oprah's radar and turning into this, you know, as she said, she sleeps in a four poster bed in Annapolis, Maryland. I mean, Cheryl Crow, who I just interviewed, told the story, and this was so jarring, about how she always wanted to get into music and she came, she was like a Midwestern girl, you know, had talent, but not much, you know, no exposure, kept getting rejected everywhere, everywhere, and kept trying, trying, trying. And this is her story. This is how she tells it. But she went on, she ended up getting a backup singer role on the Michael Jackson tour. 
and said that she was, you know, sexually harassed on that tour by someone who was on the tour, so much so that she dropped out. She left and went back to waitressing. Like she, it was that, it, she said it was that traumatic to her that she had to leave the tour and went back to another profession and realized like, wait, I love singing. I'm going back. And she did. And she ended up going back and starting all over brick by brick by brick. And I think it's, that's like the common thread I feel like I keep seeing in all these stories and people that I interview, you know. I remember Taraji P. Henson, who's one of my favorite actresses, saying that, that she was uh, pregnant in college and everyone told her, well, that's that. You got to drop out. And she said, do you know what I did, Hoda? And I said, well, what did you do? She said, oh, I walked across the stage with a baby on my hip and I collected my diploma. They told me I couldn't, and I did. And she said, and I was 24 years old, and I wanted to go to Hollywood. And they said, you can't go to Hollywood with a baby, and you don't have any experience. She goes, you know what I did? And I was just watching her life. We know what she did. I mean, she ended, she ended up being like this terrific actress who just didn't quit. And I think it's people who have been through life's ringer and somehow stand up. And I think, you know, when I was listening to Tay Diggs, who talked about how it was like to be poor and to look at people on the other side and wish you had what they had. And I wonder, you know, the struggle with, I think, some of the people who've been through hell and back is now realizing that the children that you have aren't going through a difficult time, which is a blessing. You don't want them to have to go through what you went through. But somehow, you know, sometimes you lose that fight inside you. And I think about that with with my kids too, that, you know, you want them to be workers. You want them to, to, you know, to be kids who can take some adversity, not terrible things, but enough just to make it through, you know, and you don't want to coddle them and you want them to, to feel strong um, and to get strong. And the only way to get strong is if you've been through something. I mean, you're not going to manufacture some, something to happen, obviously, but you just wish that somehow they could be strong. And, you know, I can't eat. Like, when, when Hope falls on her knees, I feel like I'm crumbling. I'm like, oh, my God, are you okay? I mean, Haley got her foot stuck under the stroller, and I just thought, like, I, I mean, I was, like, apologizing for a day after. I go, are you limping? She's like, Mom. Oh. I mean, why is she already talking like a teenager? I'm fine. I'm like, well, you're four and a half. But, um. But anyway, I just, I feel like sometimes um, the tough things are what get you through. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I thought, man had raised her hand. I thought she had, I thought she was going to chime in. I felt like it was a teacher. <laughs> and she was literally putting up five minutes. Okay. And here, okay. So for everyone who's in a relationship... <laughs> Yes, yes, in the front row, man. And did you sit in the front row, the middle row, or the back row when you were in school? The back row every time, every time. The back, you're a back row seater. I'm a back row seater. Yeah, you know. Now, but I will raise my hand. You will. What you just did. I like to do once in every class I was ever in. I was like, yeah. raise it once, and then you're done. Raise it once. <laughs> now I think I I think I would argue that if you were in the back row. I just think that you are you. It's easy to be disengaged if you're for the further back you are. And I know because I sat in the back, so I know it's like you can just fade away in the back. Maybe they should reconstruct classrooms so there's just one long row or like two long rows or a circle. Mary said a circle, yes, or a circular because it's easy. I used to love to hide behind, like just slump down just a little lower. Don't pick me. Don't pick me. Don't pick me. I was so scared of getting picked in school. That scared me. Did you like it? No, not at all. I remember um, like very specifically a moment throughout my whole, like, you know when you had to read in mm -hmm. front of people? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I saw the word capsule. And this was like fifth grade or something. And I said capoozle. <laughs> and everyone laughed at me. <gasps> oh. And I was like traumatized from oh, then on for capoozle. reading in class. Capoozle. I was so, I don't know why, but that's how I read it. And uh, yeah, that that hit me hard. Isn't it funny what still? Again. But you know, isn't that funny what still hits you after all those years? And by the way, they say that if someone mispronounces a word, and we all have and do, that often it's because they've read the word but never spoken it out loud, so they don't know. So don't fault them because sorry that they're not blurting all the words out; they're just reading them. Um, and we've all been through that, Miss Manon. <laughs> We've all been through it. 
Isn't it funny? If we all went to therapy. Can you imagine what we'd be talking about right now? <laughs> all this stuff that happened in our lives that you thought, and on one day somebody just laughed, and you're like, they, by the way, and you know who remembers it? Nobody but us. We're the only ones. Like, I even think that of the bully. I still remember there was this kid who used to pick on me in school, and I saw him later, and he's like, hey, girl. I was like, hey, girl. Wait, don't you remember? You were terrorizing me when I was a kid in school. But they have no memory. We have carried around for 50, 40. 40, 30, 20. We're lugging our business in these heavy bags. And these guys or women, whoever were the cause of it, are just like flitting along on their merry ways. Oh, and one other, I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but it just struck me as a kind of an interesting anecdote. So back to Ayanna Van Zandt for a second, this life coach. She was talking about she was with some guy married for, I think, 10 years or 12 years. And she said every time she went to the grocery store, she would get chocolate chip cookies for her and oatmeal cookies for him. And she said it, she did it every single week or whenever they went shopping because she knows that he liked oatmeal, she liked chocolate chip. So one day he went to the store and he came back with just the ones for him, oatmeal. And she was like, well, where's my cookie? He goes, oh, I, didn't, oh, I just got mine. She goes, well, where's my cookie? And she said in that moment, it was like the world snapped into focus. It wasn't about the cookie. It was about that he got things for him. And she got things for them. And so she started to look closer at that. And she wondered, is that just a moment? And then she started asking, because sometimes we assume people are going to get us things or help us with things when we don't ask for it. It's like, why weren't you there? It's like, well, you never, I didn't know you wanted me there. <laughs> well, you should have known I was carrying all the bags. <laughs> you know, I do that sometimes. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't know? I mean, I'm hot. <laughs> I'm sweating and I've got two kids. I need help. <laughs> but she tried asking him and reminding him like, actually I need this. And then he would still come back with just the one, you know, or he forgot or whatever. And so she divorced him <laughs> over the cookie. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't just the cookie. Everyone, there's a cookie in everyone's relationship. But I do think sometimes in relationships, no matter what, you always have your issue. And it's going to rear its ugly head, and then it's going to fade that back. Sometimes it's like, you hate the in-laws. Here it comes. It's Christmas. Everybody's together. And then it's going to go away again. So sometimes you have to just know these are waves. They come and they go. If it's the cookie and it's constant, that's different. But if it's an issue that's going to pop up every now and then, this is our issue. This is our thing. It's going to come up, and then it'll fade. You can't have everything you want, okay? <laughs> Go. Yeah, you can't have everything you want. Okay, anyway, that was really informative. I'd like to apologize for this edition of the Hoda Show. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great uh, day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, I'm All right, it just fits. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Oh my God, I'm dying. I, I was just thinking back to your the the infancy of your career, and I know that people look at you and think, well, that was somehow it was easy for her. Well, you know, I look back on it and I think, man, I moved from St. Louis where I was a school teacher and I had a bunch of tapes and I thought, I'm just going to go out to L.A. and see what happens. All I would say is that what seemed like an overnight success, my first album didn't even come out until I was almost 30. Oh, really? In the rock and roll world. I can remember uh, meeting Taylor Swift on an airplane and she was literally a teenager and I was like old enough to be her mom. <laughs> so, yeah, and I've been really lucky. I, I've had now. God, I hate to even say it. Say it. I'm getting ready to turn 60. So, that, there, I how, said it. How did that feel coming off your tongue? You know those little bumps you get on the side of your tongue that are like a little canker sore or whatever? That's what it feels like. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. No, I mean, yeah, I don't love it, but... You know, I, I have to say, I'm I'm really at this point in my life, I'm I am happy. But the soundtrack to Cheryl's life hasn't always been so upbeat. In 2006, she battled breast cancer and navigated a disappointing breakup with Lance Armstrong. But on the other side, at 45, paved her own path to motherhood through adoption. Did you always want kids? I just never. I just never didn't think I would have kids. But you know, there's one there's one thing about a woman and the biological clock. You know, we get blamed a lot for the demises of relationships. And I remember my last relationship crumbling largely because that is what I wanted. I didn't want to be somebody's girlfriend and raise their their kids. I didn't want to be a stepmom and not be made a wife and a mom. You know, it's sort of like being in a relationship with someone but being also the babysitter but not being getting to be the real parent and yeah that did crumble that relationship and when I came out of it it was my mom and I came out of it and also had breast cancer and went through that and it was my mom who said why don't you just get a surrogate and get some sperm and I mean I, my head is like exploding. Like, what did she just say? Like, just have my own babies? What? <laughs> but it was that. It was her saying, look, you know what? If you adopt, we are his community or her community. With her kids now 14 and 11, Cheryl is taking time to reflect. She's currently filming a documentary, one that unearthed a troubling time in life when she says a music executive sexually harassed her. Well, you know, one of the things I hadn't really talked about was my experience with being sexually harassed um, on the Michael Jackson tour. It is one of those things where we've come so far, but yet we've barely gotten our feet in the room yet. You know, we've got one foot and it's, uh, it's you know, it's emotional to talk about. Do you feel like you're healed from that, Cheryl? I, yeah, I mean, I do, certainly. But, you know, it's creepy when you talk about it. And, you know, part of it is the secrecy of not being able to tell anybody for fear of getting fired. But, yeah, I do. I mean, I feel healed from it. I, I felt like I didn't feel like the person that I was before going into that because I was very naive. I was raised mm -hmm. to believe that if you're a good person and if you work hard, all good things happen. And these days, good things are happening. Cheryl is back on the road, but more importantly, enjoying what she calls the cool honor and wonder of getting to raise her boys. Something really changed after the cancer episode and getting my kids. And, you know, if I, if I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. Mm. And to be able to say, you know what, I love my life. It's a great place to be. She does love her life. And she also said, I asked her if she was open to love, because you never know, yeah, you know, at this point. Right. And she said, it's complicated because I have two kids and the person would have to fit in with our family. Yeah. But she said, I'm, I'm always open. I mean, I love her. She's turned 60. Yes, she's cool. a happy person. It's like, a side of show crowd I've never seen before. Yeah. yeah. I just like, she's so candid. It was like just too... This is what I like about the podcast, huh. is right. just being a fly in the room, right. listening to a good conversation. <laughs> she, 
with Hoda and wow. someone incredible. She so. was, yeah, she was really. I love those podcast microphones. Yeah, you see, everything like sounds the, so good. <laughs> ah, it's the voices. It's so <laughs> great. I'm going deep. They're into the audio technology, <laughs> but that's fine. Thank There's you, something girlfriend. for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have much more with Cheryl Crow. You're going to have more on the fourth yeah. hour as well. And by the way, for that full conversation, fantastic audio and all, check out the Making Space podcast. The QR code's there at the bottom of the screen. You can also search for it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. She's also one of our best songwriters. Yes. Yeah. She's like a prolific Brilliant. songwriter. Hey, everybody. It's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people, and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now wherever you get your podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to Today All Day. I'm Joe Fryer, in for Carson. You made it to the middle of the week, good for you. And we've lined up a wonderful Wednesday edition of Pop Star Plus. We have some star power on our show for you. Supermodel Iman stopped by Studio 1A exclusively. Her first interview since the loss of her husband, David Bowie. Plus, Kevin Hart told our third hour about his serious role in a new project. But first, Chanel has your first round of Pop Star. We're going to start with Britney Spears in a new video posted to social media overnight. The pop star opens up on what's next now that she's been released from that 13-year-long conservatorship. What am I going to do now that the conservatorship's over with? Very good question. Well, let's see. I've been in the conservatorship for 13 years. It's a really long time to be in a situation you don't want to be in. Um, so I'm just grateful, honestly, for each day and being able to have um, the keys to my car and being able to be independent and feel like a woman and um, owning an ATM card, seeing cash for the first time. I'm here to be an advocate for people with real disabilities and real illnesses. Um, I'm a very strong woman, so I can only imagine um, what the system has done to those people. Well, Brittany goes on to thank fans behind the Free Brittany movement, who she credits with saving her life. And in the caption for the video, she writes, honestly, it still blows my mind every day I wake up how my family and the conservatorship were able to do what they did to me. It was demoralizing and degrading. Spears says she hopes her story will bring changes to the system. All right, next up, oh, this is going to be a good one. Don't look up, a trailer. It's new, out from Adam for Adam McKay's star-studded dark comedy about a college professor and grad student played by Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, who discover that a comet is headed directly towards Earth, and it seems like no one is taking them seriously. There's uh, something you don't like the looks of. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. Our guests today have made a pretty big discovery in space. How big is this thing going? I can't destroy my ex-wife's house. Is that possible? <laughs> There's a 100% chance that we're all going to die. Hey. 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 <laughs> well, the handsome astronomer can come back anytime, but the yelling lady, mm, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's the thing. As you can see, the film has an all-star cast. Kate Blanchett, Tyler Jesus Perry, Meryl Christ. Streep, John wow. Hill, just to name a few. I'm telling you, watch the full trailer. Don't Look Up hits theaters and Netflix next month. Okay. All right, next up, Harry Potter. It's been 20 years since J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World hit the big screen, and to celebrate the occasion, HBO Max announced on Tuesday the film's famous trio will be reuniting for an upcoming anniversary special. Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grant coming together for, Grant, I should say, coming together for a look back at the first film that inspired generations of magic-loving Muggle fans. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone director Chris Columbus, along with series stars Helena Bonham Carter, Robbie Coltrane, Gary Oldman, all set to join Harry Potter. 20th anniversary, Return to Hogwarts, hits HBO Max on New Year's Day. Next up, Ghostbusters. Earlier this week, the stars of the original film, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson, stopped by The Tonight Show to talk about reuniting for the franchise's latest installment, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And on Tuesday, Fallon shared a behind-the-scenes clip from the show where Blues brother Dan Aykroyd grabbed the mic during a commercial break to sing a spooky song with Jimmy and his co-stars. Listen to this. But you say no, you got a plan for the night, and then you say, oh, oh.
I you know like what Bill dances. You know what? They just like to get together and have yeah. a good time. Cool. I'm here for it. You know, Pretty we cool. need it. Yeah. All right. And yeah. finally, Law and Order. Oh. Ooh, Mom will be so happy. <laughs> a new promo for an upcoming crossover between Law and Order SVU and organized crime has fans online buzzing after a fleeting moment between Captain Benson, oh, Benson and Detective Sabler that we've all been Hold waiting on. for. Hold on. So you accepted my offer. We got a lot of work to do. Whatever happens, we're going to take it one step at a time. Oh, hey, wait, I missed it. What Did you that? catch that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Benson wait, and Stapler. Wait, the, wait were they the were fingers? holding Yeah, look at that. I have a question. They were, were the holding hands. Intertwined. Inter intertwined. They were? Yes. Yeah. I couldn't tell. Yeah. Here on Pop Start Plus, we have a few more things you need to know about. First up, Kelly Clarkson, the pop superstar's radio anthem, Since You've Been Gone, just turned 17. And to mark the occasion, Kelly shared a video straight from the set of The Voice that sees the entire audience belting out that iconic chorus. Check this out. Even coaches Ariana Grande and John Legend had to join in on that one. It is, of course, impossible not to sing along, right? All right, and finally, Spider-Man. A new trailer is out for Tom Holland's Spidey sequel, Spider-Man No Way Home. The sneak peek for the upcoming Marvel movie teases the young superhero's newfound friendship with Doctor Strange and the return of the most infamous villains to ever cross the web-slinging superhero's path. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man. We started getting some visitors. From every universe. Hello, Peter. There you see Alfred Molina and Willem Dafoe, who previously starred in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man series, are back, reprising the roles of Doc Ock and the Green Goblin. Spider-Man No Way Home hits theaters December 17th. Those are today's headlines. Up next, Iman's visit to Studio 1A. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow! Welcome to Football Fright in America. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker. A Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know. Every morning on Today. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. We're so glad supermodel Iman stopped by Studio 1A to update us on her life and how she's been doing since the 2016 loss of her husband, David Bowie. Check it out. We're honored to be joined by a true icon, supermodel, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, Iman. She is releasing her first fragrance. It's called Love Memoir. It's a tribute to her late husband of 26 years, the legendary David Bowie. Iman, good morning. It's so beautiful to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 26 years you were with David Bowie. Yeah. It's been almost six years uh, since he passed. 
and grieving doesn't come easy. Yep. Um, and it took you up until uh, just recently to really grieve his passing. Yes, because I have a, I have a daughter who is a teenager when yeah. her father passed away. So I was really more concentrated in helping her go through her grief. And I thought, oh yes, I, I did go through my grief, but I actually did not. And so last year I went to my house upstate and this beautiful property that, uh, that I haven't spent time there since my husband passed away. And there I was stuck for the year. And, you were forced uh, to, to and be I was there. Forced to, yeah. yeah, to deal with it. And all of a sudden grief knocked on the door oh. and there became a companion and I went through all of it, and now it is the joy that I remember. Yeah. I have a quote that I actually sent to a friend of mine, and I want to read it to you and see if it applies to you. Yep. It says, grief I've learned is really just love. It's all the love you want to give but cannot. All of the unspent love gathers up in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in the hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. It totally, totally is <laughs> apt. It, it Do you is. feel like you've had a way to deal with it? I know you've had your time to process. Do you feel like you've come to terms now? Uh, because I think, I think there are days that are harder than others. Uh, I don't think it will ever go away. But the acceptance of it and the remembrance of the joy, mm -hmm. rather than saying uh, every memory that, oh, I wish he was here, I wish we could experience this together. Now I remember the 26 joyful years mm. I had with my husband. Well, obviously, I'm looking at your necklace, and it yes. says David. And I read that your, your daughter, uh, Lexi, asked you yep. at one point, Mom, do you think you'll ever marry again? And what did you say? No. No, I mean, people say to me when they talk, oh, you know, I love your, loved your late husband. And I said, he's not my late husband. He's my husband. You know, so that's how I feel about it. No, this was truly the love of my life. And... Um, and I'll just wait till I meet him again. <laughs> oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I love that you met on a blind date. Oh. I mean, that's one of my favorite things. He knew right away. Yeah. Did you know right away? No, and it was a hairdresser. Oh, yes. You know, you, I only trust the hairdresser with a hair shampoo or conditioner. Yeah. You know, the love of my life. <laughs> well, now you learned, right? But I learned. He did good. So he knew. He said it was love at but, first sight. But he was a rock star, and you were sort of like, I don't know if I want to dip my toe in that water right now. Absolutely. But yeah. also, I was a huge fan of his music. I went to all his concerts. Oh, you did, before this? Yes, and yeah. I never went backstage. I was invited to come and meet him backstage, but I never went backstage yeah. because I felt awkward. What do you say, right? So, I, But I think it was about destiny. Destiny really propelled me to go to L.A. For no obvious reason. I retired from modeling, and then I moved to L.A. And literally a year and a half, I met him. So I think Destiny was propelling me to go to L.A. to finally meet my husband. Well, it's one thing to meet someone and know, but I love one of the, one of the signs you said that you knew you had picked the right guy is the two of you were walking along, and he bent down on his knee and tied your shoe. Yes, my shoelace <laughs> came apart, and he got on his knees yeah. and tied my shoelace. I don't think anybody did that for me since I was two years old. <laughs> so what was he? Like, we, we know him as the rock star. We yeah. see him on stage, and we know that guy. Yeah. But I was so curious. What was he like on a random Wednesday at yeah. home with you and Lexi? Uh, the kindest, gentlest human being. And what I loved about him also is that how he treated people. Mm -hmm. He treated everybody at the same level, whether you're a janitor or you're another superstar. Mm -hmm. So that's what I loved about him, kind, mm -hmm. present, uh, oh. funny. <laughs> Is it hard to look at these pictures? I'm just watching yeah, him yeah. with There's your Lexi. little girl, yes. yeah, with yes. Lexi. Yeah. What was he like as a dad? Oh, he loved it because also we met late in life. Uh, for both of us, we'd been married before. We had older children. So, so this was like a choice. Right, and so, and he felt very safe at mm -hmm. home and with us. Mm -hmm. So that was what was great about him. I mean, my daughter has witnessed the love between my between the two of us. Mm. That she actually says now, I hope to God that I'll meet a man who would love me as much as my dad loved my mom. So you know, it was he was visibly really with us, mm -hmm. and that is why I really feel that he's still with us. You know, he's in plain sight, but he's right there with you us. You feel him, with huh? Him. We feel him everywhere? Everywhere. And especially at the property, because it was uh, such a, a, a personal place that we built together. 
and has these most magical mountains, sunsets every day. Mm. So really, yeah. So the, I smell him and see him every day at the property. You said you smell him, and I think that's really interesting because you put his cologne on you for years after he passed. And I know a lot of women who like nuzzle their nose into their uh, their, their departed husband's yeah. jackets to feel him. Yeah. You actually wore his fragrance for a, for a while and then you wanted to create something yeah. that was more than that, more about your love story together. Yeah, I mean, it's a tribute to, to love. What has happened last year is really unique. It's not just the individual, but it's the universal. Yeah. We all been through it. Uh, so what I really wanted to create was a fragrance that had a bit of him, which is the very rare. Mm -hmm. And I've been wearing only his fragrance for the past five years. Mm. And so, but it creates something that was a tribute to love mm. uh, and an eternal love, eternal an eternal love. devotion. Mm. That, and I think at the mm. end of the day, at the end of our days, the only thing we will have, if we are lucky, is our memories. Don't cry. I know. <laughs> that's beautiful. But yeah, but that's that, that's the yeah. thing that we will have, and so will sustain us after the the person passes away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. What a terrific and very rare conversation with him on. When we come back, Kevin Hart fills us in on his new and rather unexpected role. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker. A Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Kevin Hart is known for making people laugh, but for his latest project, Netflix's True Story, he dips into a more serious character, playing a comedian who might be in real trouble. And Kevin, along with executive producer Eric Newman, stopped by the third hour of today to give us a glimpse. How far would you go to protect what you have? Well, that's the main question behind the new miniseries, True Story. The show stars Kevin Hart tapping into his dramatic side, playing a famous comedian called Kid. While at a tour stop in his hometown of Philadelphia, he spent some time with his older brother, Carlton, played by Wesley Snipes. And folks, it doesn't take long for things to get a little tense. I'm happy to see you, man. I'm happy to see you too, man. Coming up and everything. Yes, sir. On your grind, <laughs> on tour. Yes, sir. Got the kitty movie coming out, going big. It's not a kitty movie, see, it's a superhero movie. Superhero movie that's almost at a billion dollars. Wow, dude, I ain't see it, man. You know, I was gonna see it though, but not really my thing. You know? It's not your thing, but you know it's a kitty movie? You know, gotta be a kitty movie because your movies don't make a billion dollars. 
Mm. Wow, Kevin, Kevin Hart's movies do make a big difference. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kevin joins us now, along with the show's creator, Eric Newman. Gentlemen, uh, good morning. Good to morning. Both Thank morning. you for your time. Good morning. Good morning. The, the series is fantastic. Thank it's you. absolutely fantastic. And when we chatted a few months back, you were working on fatherhood, mm -hmm. and you were in Asia or someplace, and I asked you then, I want to ask you again, with this new series, it seems like you're, you're turning a corner, turning a page, or is this just... Having us, a good time. You're having a good time. Having a good time. Uh, you know, I think the, the beauty of the business that I'm in is it creates opportunities that you can, you can fall into or not. And, uh, you know, comedy is uh, an amazing platform. It's done amazing things for me. It's not going anywhere. Okay. I'm going to be true to it. And this is an opportunity just for me to show different layers and levels to my talent. Mm -hmm. That's and, it. Eric, you guys work together on the, on the plot, yes. the series. The character, the character's name is Kid, doesn't he? We yes. don't even know his, his real name. Mm -hmm. uh, but there seem to be some similarities in, in Kevin's life to this. Was that important to you guys to, to mm -hmm. fold that in? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, one of the things that, that Kevin brings to this is this, you know, incredible pedigree in comedy that shifts then into a, a completely different mode, into thriller mode. And I think you mentioned uh, fatherhood. If you look at the upside and you look at fatherhood, yep. this is a, there's an evolution here. Mm -hmm. and, and this is fe felt like, you know, the next step for it's, him. It's also too, you know, I gotta give Eric credit. You know, in creating this thing, the, the most important thing for us was how do we make the audience believe me in the direction that we want them to go in. You know, acting and the performance, yes, it'll be there, but how do we how do we provide a mind, a mind melt? And, and what is the answer to that? Because I wondered that too, because sometimes we're like, oh, Kevin Hart, and even though we know you can do drama, we're thinking, okay, we're waiting for the joke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How do you do that? Do you well, have to have a little levity or no? Well, no, see, this is where the trick comes in. If you notice the character, he doesn't have a name. So you're calling them kids. So the way that we start to show off is by giving them similarities that you can say, oh, wow, it's kind of attached to Kevin's real life. And then we hit you with a turn of where the show actually starts. You see it's just complete opposite. This turn. guy, yes, it's quite the turn. Yeah. Out. It's interesting because I was just saying to you, Eric, in the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. it's really arresting. You're sitting there talking directly to camera, posing these questions. What would you do mm -hmm. to protect all that you have? You kind of, and I started thinking, are you talking about your life? Are you talking about our life? Mm -hmm. Are you, that's the beauty. The beauty. And you yeah. said that was an add-on. Yes. Why'd you add that on? Was it for specifically that reason? The, the challenge, and I think what people are going to love about this show, uh, is that we're taking a, a guy who's known for being funny. You, Kevin Hart comes on screen, and you're expecting to laugh. Yeah. And you're watching it, and you really bring it. And sometimes you just... I see him every morning and I, I laugh. Yeah, because um, you're funny, Kevin. Yeah, he's so really, he's really. Sometimes, sometimes. 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 I'm a serious face on now. This is my drama face. Like, you're funny, yeah. There's a difference again. You notice I've had my drama face on this whole time. But yeah, you see humor. That's the drama face. This is me promoting drama. You're a dramatic. That's me right now, drama. Now, where's the funny face? If Kevin Hart decides to come do morning TV, you said. Morning TV. Yeah, like that. Today, here, I would quit. That's what you There's no way I would do it here today. You're putting your coffee. Way Listen, down there. It, yeah. It's Impressive. easier. It's easier to get into jail cells than it is in this place. I've never seen. I've never went through more. I gave a blood sample. Did you <laughs> know? Just, I gave a blood sample out there. Kevin, Kevin we, have to, we have to take every precaution. No, you, you are. I gave blood today. Yeah. I, I gave blood. I gave a fingerprint. I said. <laughs> I, I said you. you have. It was so bad. You I had, had a single breakthrough case. Listen, here. I, I, I said the front. I said y'all did know I was coming, right? <laughs> y'all know I was coming. They invited you. Yeah, this is. Bad, but stop making me be funny. I'm here to do I'm sorry. drama. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. going back drama. to serious. Drama. Yes. Yeah. Drama. drama. That's right. Drama. So, so you know, it's interesting. I'm watching, coming toward the end of this, it's kind of open-ended. Is, yes. is this meant to go on? So I think the beauty the beauty of our series is this, right? It's, it's about what we're going to make the audience think. And I got to give this guy credit here. If you're not familiar with Eric and his work, you know, Narcos is an amazing series that people fell in love with. But the ride that it takes you on through truth, through that grounded reality of what these people's lives were is what makes it special. So when we ground our show and Kid takes you on his whirlwind of what his life is yeah. and was and where it ended up, it leaves you with the question of what now? So, you know, if we choose to answer that question, that's one thing that we have the option to do. And I think as creators, showrunners, producers, um, it's always a plus. It's always a bonus to leave people wanting more. And in this case, we definitely leave them wanting more, the appetite for more, to see what happens to this guy. It'll be there. So I would love for the world to go on. I think it's all about the reaction. That's we're going to wait to see. That's we good. are we're all here for the evolution of Kevin. Yeah. I'm yeah. so enjoying he seeing called, this You called him and said you want to be crazy. 
that's actually not what I said. I want to kill somebody. My exact words was I said, I want to I want to kill somebody and I don't know the best approach to doing it. So how can we make <laughs> this believable? Yeah. And dramatic, I mean, this well, was in, I mean, well, you mean, look, is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, 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 you know, it's, it's a tease. Is it, oh, is it attached to life? to get from <laughs> someone you don't know. Yeah. Here's the scary part. Is the scary part the phone call or the guy that says, I'll be there in 10 minutes and let's figure it out? Up next, we're celebrating a legend's birthday, the one and only Danny DeVito. Stick around. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man, the All right, it just made it Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back. We're back. You might be familiar with one of Danny DeVito's more recent roles as Frank Reynolds in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But today, on DeVito's 77th birthday, we're revisiting one of his earliest characters, dispatcher Louis De Palma in the classic sitcom Taxi. Here's a reunion from the vault that Al had with the cast back in 2004. I'm starting off with Mary Lou Henner, oh, of course, so as yeah. Elaine Nardo, J uh, Judd Hirsch, who is, of course, Alex Riga. All right. <laughs> All right. That's, -E -G -G -E that's right. And Louis De Palma, of course, Danny DeVito, Carol Kane as Simka, Latka's wife, and uh, Tony Danza, Tony Banta, the heavyweight uh, boxer, or wanted to be middleweight. Middle middle <laughs> and, and Jeff Conaway was Bobby Wheeler. It's Robert. Good. Robert Wheeler, <laughs> excuse me. Robert. Oh, that's right. Robert. Robert well, I don't. That's right. I, I just now, when there you was guys, not one show we called him that, yes. Not yet. You're all, he was always Bobby. Now, when, this, when you first got the scripts for this, you know, to do a New York taxi cab sitcom, what did you guys think? Well, 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 we all got, we, like, sides first. Yeah, I mean, it was we, all different they, monologues. Yeah, right. We never scripts. even saw the script until we were about to shoot. That's right. Uh, it was really incredible. But, but the, the idea that you were going to have, script, a, yeah. you were gonna have a, you know, taxi drivers, it just seemed so gritty and earthy and so different from any other kind of sitcom that was on at the time. The first time I met them, they were still writing it. <laughs> I was waiting in the office, and it, time's going by and going by and going by, and Jim Brooks sticks his head out and he says, Jeff, this is probably the only time you're going to be here for a reading while we're writing it. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Danny, you, you, you had already done a movie, and people told you, I, don't do this. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. I, well, I did, I'd done Cuckoo's Nest, and I'd come out to California to you know, see what I could do in movies. I'd, I did uh, Going South with Jack Nicholson, and then this came along. And every, it's not like a, I guess it was a kind of elitist thing in California. People would say, you know, don't do television. It was like, you know, stay away from television, do do movies and uh, and uh, they offered me this part. It was a great the, the script was great. The yeah. characters were great. It was like just like say, seemed like a gift from God. Mm. And then you know I go to my my good friends and I say, "Guy, look at this. I got this." And they go, "Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing you could ever do." Oh. And I could say to you, "You guys were wrong." <laughs> Plus, the first time we all met each other, it was like an instant love fest. I mean, everybody, you know, we were all crazy about each other. We all hung out. We went baseball Obies. games, parties. People always say, what was Taxi like? And I always say, we did 112 shows. We had 112 parties. Yeah, that's Every right. single week, we Absolutely. had a party after the show. Friday night was the night. Yeah. And we, everybody we do from our, Hollywood would come We'd around. shoot our show Friday night with, with all the, you know, 300 yeah, people it, there. Right. We would have a room upstairs. They mm -hmm. give us a great room upstairs. And after the show... 
We all went up, we beelined Everything. up to the We Tuesday all paid rap. for it, except four times a year the producers paid for it. But I'd collect, <laughs> <laughs> I'd collect the money, and we had a caterer, and we always like right. invited yeah, the whole lot, and everybody and came. Everybody, and everybody, and when we had, was, everybody uh, was there. Right. Uh, Penny Marshall everybody. would come. Well, was so like, people from the other sitcoms would show up. Robin Williams, Williams, Williams came. It was like um, being in college or something, because you had the guys from Bosom Buddies, you had the working stiffs, you know, you had Jim Belushi, and you had uh, 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 Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. and Tom Hanks, and Peter Scolari, and the whole Cast of Happy Days and you've got this and Mindy. You've got this family, and Carolyn, in, in the, the fifth season, you come in as, as, as Latka's wife. How difficult was that, coming into an already established group? Well, um, I, I had done one show the second season, mm -hmm. and I, you know what? I have to just say that this uh, group was just so uh, welcoming and, and loving and supportive right away. It was just like, uh, well, and in terms of the writing, one I one time I had uh, um, this line, you know, peel me like a grape so I can get out of here. And, and I remember like driving on the lot thinking, I'll pay them anything. You know, how much can I pay to get to say those words? <laughs> And there you have it, Pop Start Plus for the day. Tune in tomorrow right here and on today when the great Lynn Manuel Miranda will be with us. Thanks for watching. Well, 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 it's time for our favorite midweek edition of Today in 30. It's our favorite streaming channel, and it's called, in case you're wondering, Today All Day. Today All Day, and we packed so much into this next half hour for you. First things first, some hopeful mm. new signs for the holiday season. Sales are surging. Approval for COVID vaccine booster shots for all adults expected this week. So we've got the latest on that. Also a good conversation about Thanksgiving travel. Plus, once you arrive, you got to eat. So we've got your guide to a safe and happy family feast, especially if it may be the biggest get together you guys have had in a while. Vicki Wynn, Dr. Azar will have everything we need to know to navigate. And speaking of the Thanksgiving meal, Al is cooking up a storm with the chef Alexander Smalls. They get into a very heated debate. Stepping or dressing. Oh, what you call it? What you call it. Is, it is the there a difference? Thing? To me, it's all the same. It tastes this poor Not gravy. to these two. Put, put gravy on it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just eat it. Don't talk about <laughs> and it. And it's that time of the year when we help you give your beauty Without bag a refresh. We've got a great list of award-winning drugstore buys, so the price is right for your face and body, recommended by our own staff. I'm all in. Couldn't we use a little zoom? Mm -hmm. Let's time do it. for this beautiful edition of Today, Today in 30. 30. NBC's Ann Thompson is in Times Square with the latest on all these COVID headlines. Hi, Ann. Good morning. Good morning, Savannah. The FDA and CDC will meet at this at the end of this week to discuss expanding booster eligibility, a hopeful sign for so many as the Thanksgiving Day holiday approaches. And here in New York City, there is one more reason to smile. Officials announcing Times Square's New Year's Eve celebration is back on. In a matter of days, Pfizer's COVID booster could get the green light for people 18 years and older who are six months out from their second dose, paving the way for tens of millions of Americans to get another shot. It's going to be very important for people to get the booster shot. Pfizer is also asking the FDA to authorize emergency use of its COVID antiviral pill. The company says its clinical trials show the pill reduces the risk of hospitalization and death by 89 percent in people at high risk of severe illness. The Biden administration planning to buy enough pills for 10 million people, hoping they'll curb the winter uptick along with that booster rollout. Here in New York City, adult residents welcoming the extra jab. Hopefully it's more of a Christmas 2019. We can enjoy our family. New York, one of a handful of states and cities already expanding booster eligibility to all adults amid a troubling surge in cases. In Vermont, a nation leading 72 percent of residents there are fully vaccinated. But the state's two week case count jumped 60 percent. Most of the new cases unvaccinated people. Across New England, the two-week case count is up in every state except Connecticut, but even there, deadly outbreaks. At the Gear Village Senior Community, eight residents died from COVID. A total of 89 residents and staff got infected just over the last month and a half. Almost everyone had been vaccinated. But health officials still emphasizing that vaccines will make the difference this holiday season. If you have a vaccinated group, then you could enjoy the winter and enjoy being at home for the holidays indoors without worrying about masks. And New York City plans to send 2021 out in style, just like it used to before the pandemic. 
with crowds, performances, and controlled pandemonium at midnight. If we want it to be a great New York celebration. And in Washington, D.C., officials there are lifting that city's indoor mask mandate for public places starting Monday. Savannah? And, and let's ask uh, about the Pfizer COVID antiviral pill because the company's also said it is looking to expand access to that drug around the world. What more do you know about that? Yes, Savannah, this is really exciting. Pfizer is asking to license that pill to other companies so it can be made globally. And health officials say that could go a long way to stopping the spread of the coronavirus by keeping killing the coronavirus in the in the countries where those highly contagious variants start. Savannah. Yeah, real good game changer there. And thank you. Thanksgiving, now just eight days away, and tens of millions of Americans are gearing up to travel for the holiday. Yeah, traffic on the roads and the airports set for a strong rebound over last year when so many families missed out on the chance to be together. In a moment, we're going to talk about the holiday rush with the head of the TSA. But first, NBC's Carrie Sanders joins us from the airport in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A lot of people heading south for the holidays. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. Good, good morning, guys. Uh, look, if you're traveling next week for Thanksgiving by air, AAA says Monday will be your easiest day and least expensive. But come Tuesday and Wednesday, expect it to be more expensive and potentially chaotic. Whether you're taking to the sky or hitting the highway, this year, Turkey Day travel is on the rise. We are excited. Yeah, it's always good to be together. AAA anticipates more than 53 million Americans will travel over Thanksgiving, a 13% increase from 2020 and nearing pre-pandemic levels. So expect longer wait times at airports and even on the phone with airlines, like this customer who is on hold for more than three hours, 40 minutes. People are going to be traveling for the first time probably since the pandemic, and they're not used to the whole travel experience. So get familiar with your airline check-in procedures. Do the research now. Do the planning and planning ahead. Strict federal protocols are still in effect at airports. And if you're planning on packing some Thanksgiving treats, the TSA says solids like meats, baked goods, and stuffing can be carried on. But anything that can spill, like homemade cranberry sauce, grandma's preserves, or that special wine, should go in a checked bag. Uh, unruly passenger, we need to get off the airplane. One issue airports and airlines are monitoring, unruly passengers. More than 5,100 incidents so far this year have been reported to the FAA. Don't ruin your travel plans, don't ruin your holiday plans because you couldn't behave for a few hours and couldn't control your temper or control your alcohol. From the runway to the roadway, those driving may have second thoughts because of fuel prices. Gas Buddy says the average price per gallon on Thanksgiving Day is projected to cost $3.35, more than a dollar higher than 2020. And in California, Sticker Shock Premium, $6.59 a gallon. But no matter how you plan on traveling to your destination, experts say staying patient and building in extra time is crucial to getting to your celebration safely. If you're one of those unruly passengers, the FAA can fine you up to $3,700, and airlines have started to put some of those unruly passengers on no-fly lists that could last a lifetime. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back. Nearly a dozen hours.
hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. We're back. Uh, 814 this morning on today's Holiday Handbook. We are focusing on your Thanksgiving Day feast. Yeah, for a lot of people, this is probably going to be the first family get-together in quite some time. And, of course, everyone wants mm -hmm. to celebrate in the safest ways possible. Yeah, so here to help with that, we've got the crack team, NBC's <laughs> investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn, NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar. So we have a lot of questions for you. Nat, mm -hmm. I'll start with okay. you. The CDC guidance, <laughs> what are they saying about indoor gatherings, gatherings yeah. with extended family? Think of it this way, four domains. Number one is vaccination. That is still your best way to protect yourself. It's also the best way to protect the kids in your bubble who are not yet eligible for vaccination. Number two is masking. If you are unvaccinated, you are masking pretty much everywhere, indoors and outdoors for your safety. Number three, setting matters. Remember this, outdoors is safer than indoors. And if you are indoors, make sure that your ventilation is there. Buy a space heater, keep your windows open. And lastly, this is where testing can become Mm -hmm. such an extra good layer, mm -hmm. such a best friend to you. Remember, PCR, a couple days before traveling, rapids when you arrive. I just ordered a couple rapids off of Amazon the other day oh. to have, you know, in preparation for, for having guests at the house and whatnot. What so, about little kids who aren't eligible to be yeah. vaccinated? Yes. They're under five being around grandparents. Right. Mm. So I'm going to, I'm going to reassert this concept that grandparents out there have probably been eligible for boosting for quite some time now. So grandparents, please get your booster if you haven't because you want to protect your little ones. And yes, of course, we know that there is the potential that the little ones could transmit to the older folks. It's not as likely to happen. Again, if you can be outdoors, you do that. Would you want the little ones to be wearing masks? You know, listen, if you're, if you're in a household, remember this, we always go back to this. If you're in a household, Hold with other fully vaccinated folks and you keep it within your household, no, you don't have to have your little one's mask. But if you're mixing groups and you don't know vaccination status, yeah. over age two, mask. Well, let's talk boosters. Uh, some people have got their vaccinations uh, and they're wondering, should I go race and get a booster before I sit down for Thanksgiving? Okay, so my, my answer to this is going that um, we are going to hear, as I know we've been talking about all morning, the CDC has a, an advisory committee meeting planned for Friday. You know what that means? They anticipate that the FDA is probably going to authorize boosters for everybody over the age of 18 um, this week, as early as right. Thursday. And look, the short answer is this. If you've been vaccinated with any of the vaccines that are authorized or approved in this country, you're very well protected against severe disease and hospitalization. But we know that waning, that there is waning immunity um, just protecting you from infection. Yet you do hear about those breakthrough cases with yes. people who are double vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend mm -hmm. whose husband was double mm -hmm. vaccinated and boosted mm -hmm. and still got a breakthrough wow. case. Right. Yeah. So here's the thing. You, when you are vaccinated, you decrease transmission to yeah. others. Yeah. And the way you do that is by having more vaccinated people means less infection in the community. And if you are vaccinated, but you get a breakthrough, you're infectious for less long than someone who's mm -hmm. unvaccinated. Vic, let's talk about vaccination yeah. status for a moment, because again, lots of folks next week, they travel, they're around family, they're around friends. Can you ask someone if they've been vaccinated? Is that is it's that becoming blood? a really common question? Okay. And the oh, etiquette yeah. experts say absolutely do it and be straight up with it. I'm vaccinated. Are you? We just want to know because we're trying to plan risk assessment for our family. Now, what happens if you're planning a holiday gathering? Put all of that information in the invitation. What are your uh, expectations far in advance? So fully vaxxed guests only. We're going to have a mixed crowd. We're doing masking. We're not doing masking. Let everybody get on the same page. What happens, though, if you get to that party and nobody's following the rules? Right. Mm. All right. That happens. Elaine Swan, yes, it does. She runs an etiquette school. She told us this. If you are the host, you make an announcement. Hey, everybody, this is what we expect. Do it. If you're a guest, you go up to that host one-on-one -on -one and mm. say, hey, listen, I thought we were going to do X. It's not happening. Give the host a chance to fix it. If they don't do it to your liking, you just tell the host, hey, I would love to stay longer. I feel a little uncomfortable, so I'm just going to yeah, scoop. No drama mm -hmm. for your mama. Just make it right. <laughs> no drama for your mama. Yeah. Good tips. Before you leave us this morning, really quickly, can we talk about saving money? Are there any deals left if you haven't booked for travel? So the most expensive time to travel is going to be the day before or right after a major holiday. The week before, like right now, would be a great time to travel for Thanksgiving. If you're trying to get just a getaway in general, the first two weeks of January is the best time. Travel prices take a real nosedive. 
Be careful when booking with third-party companies. You might find a wonderful deal. Cancellation policies can be a real pain. The last thing I want to say is the FBI just issued a scam warning saying if you get a robocall, a text message, or an email Mm -hmm. from someone saying, hey, you've won a travel package, or hey, we've got this Mm -hmm. really great deal, hang up the phone, delete those messages. Mm -hmm. This is prime time for scammers. Mm Got it. All right. Vicky, thanks, Dr. Natalie. Thank you. Great tips. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fit to. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? Five there is some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Earlier this month, to help us all prepare for Thanksgiving, Al launched his new podcast, which is a hit, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. In each episode, some famous foodies share their tips and break down the Thanksgiving meal one dish at a time. Well, one of them is chef and legendary dinner party host Alexander Smalls. He shared his thoughts on stuffing versus dressing Mm. and showed me how to make entertaining for a meal extra special. Low Country Oyster Cornbread Dressing with Crispy Slab Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Smalls. Welcome to Cooking Up a Storm, my friend. I am the bacon. (laughs) Well, you certainly are a bit of a ham. When you were a kid growing up, what was the part of the meal, the dish, that you couldn't wait for? Oh... Well, no surprise, the dressing. (laughs) It had the juice of the turkey. It had the gravy of the turkey. It was full of of savory um, uh, uh, spices and aromatics, you know, and an excuse to pile tons of cranberry sauce on top. Here's the thing. I grew up uh, here in, in New York, and my mom called it stuffing. You call it dressing. Are they the same thing? They are. They're just prepared differently. The stuffing goes inside the cavity of the bird, and dressing goes in a casserole dish. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you very much. All right, so then we're going Describe to- what makes this uh, exactly a low country dressing. Oysters and cornbread. You want to get into that little area there and twist. Is it happening for you, Al? <laughs> <laughs> the oysters have a certain Uh, connection for you and your dad. Yeah. We used to sit at the kitchen table and shuck oysters, you know, together. Uh, He and my grandfather would make a trip down to Beaufort, South Carolina, and uh, they would come back with just baskets of oysters and crab, and they would have oyster boils, and they'd have crab boils. Your uh, Thanksgiving dinners are are fairly legendary for those of us who know in, in New York. What's the one thing people need to know if they're going to host Thanksgiving dinner this year? 
Anytime you invite people for a Thanksgiving celebration, you have to be generous. Mm -hmm. And that generosity starts with everything you do and everything you make and everything you offer. And you, how dare you run out of anything? <laughs> you better not. <laughs> What is it about uh, Thanksgiving that, I mean, you're giving thanks, but it's a food-centric meal, right. a, a holiday, right. that there's nothing else involved. You know, there's no, there aren't presents. The, the, the food is the Everything. gift. Yes. So, but, you know, I think that understanding for the uh, African-American community, particularly, um, food was currency. You know, when you didn't own yourself, you owned that recipe, you owned that dish. And people took great pride in being able to create a dish. And so Thanksgiving comes along and you can put tons of those dishes on the plate. It made you feel wealthy, you know, and very satisfied. Now tell me what you think. Oh, that's good. This is a completely rounded meal. And it has bacon. That's the secret ingredient. <laughs> We are thankful for you, for your contributions. This stuffing, dressing is fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm looking forward to just spending more time getting to see folks like you hanging out. Me too, Al. Thank you for being part of Cooking Up a Storm. I've enjoyed it, Up a Storm. <laughs> really, uh, really I nice, Al. Now, can that. you slide me whatever was on that plate? Oh, Al. I'm going to tell you, it's fantastic. Is it good? It's good. So good. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you want to try to make that, you can stream or download all six episodes of Cook Cooking Up a Storm right now, wherever you get your podcasts. And today at 11 a.m. Eastern, I'm going to be hosting a special Twitter Spaces conversation all about the podcast. Just head on over to our Twitter page at Today Show and you can listen and you can even tweet your cooking questions using the hashtag Ask Roker. Well, sure. Gosh. Yeah. He's a busy man. He isn't is he? a busy man. I'm like, like when cooking, do you sleep? podcasting, uh, me and Kevin Hart. Yeah, yeah you and Kevin Hart just never sleep. <laughs> this isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, it's that time of the year again when we help give your beauty bag a refresh. For seven years, Today and People Magazine have been teaming up for the People Beauty Awards. Uh, this year, dozens of staffers tried out more than 300 drugstore products. Today, we are featuring some of the winners and the skin and body care. Was that Iman on the cover yes, of People Magazine? Yes, don't you love that Iman is everywhere? I'm sorry, <laughs> but here we go. Okay, Today Lifestyle <laughs> contributor Jill Martin is here along with People Style and Beauty director Andrea Laventhal, and you can shop along by scanning that QR code right it, here. It, <laughs> yeah, Andrea, is this your first outing? This is my is first, first time out? back here. And the, well, welcome, years. welcome. Happy Jill's been with us a lot. of us have aged a minute. Thanks for the moisturizer. Exactly. All right, so talk to us about the exfoliator winner. We love right this series. Yeah. Okay, so everyone loved this exfoliator. I think mm -hmm. for starters, because it smells like OJ. Exactly. Literally, like freshly squeezed OJ. Oh my gosh, it really does. It's by Winky Lux, mm -hmm. and it has vitamin C, three forms of vitamin C, which is amazing for brightening. So where do you, on your face or body? On your face. Oh, face. 
and you, you use it, it. Yes. it smooths your skin, it mm. brightens. The testers loved it. Honestly, I think it helped them wake up in the morning. Oh yeah, you scent. do feel. I yeah, like that. So and it feels nice. great. It's mm. not too grainy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's nice and gentle. I like it. I skin. want it. I Me love too. that. And what I, yeah, these are all for 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 trying. And what I love yeah. about these is you can get them in drugstores. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's really accessible, and we right. picked yeah. the best of the best. And our staffers, we really tried a lot of products. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. These are little capsules. The Rock Multi Correction Hydrate and Plump Serum things. Capsules. Mm -hmm. What you do is you just break it. It's not fussy. Yeah. You break it open. Twist it. Use it once a day. We were saying. This is me using it. You use it at night because you really want and on your face, you really oh, and my neck, oil. you, want you that really want it to, and you want it to seep in. Yeah. Like you really so want to feel it. Do you it put it on before uh, uh, moisturizer? Yeah, and okay. I actually put it on last night without anything. Yeah, I, yeah, used, on I used one and a half. It has a hyaluronic acid, which hydrates the skin and mm. makes it look noticeably in the morning. Mm. Our, um, the person who tried it on our staff said she didn't have a bed wrinkled morning. Wow. So it's like a plumper and, what's the and price hydrates. Of this? It's no. like under $10. They're right? all so, under yeah. 20 oh, yeah. 20, yeah. Okay, what's next? Okay, so next we have the e.l.f. skin. And speaking of price, this one is $12. Okay. Wow. So okay. It's pretty amazing to find a great moisturizer under $15. So mm -hmm. what people loved about this is that it's really light, but it gives you um, what one staffer described as a drink of water for your skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, this is our very own Sarah Ball testing it. Mm -hmm. Really, everyone raved about this one. And what's so cool is, again, it's only $12. Yeah, 12 bucks. Great. Okay, yeah. what's next? Okay, this, I can't, my hands are so oily down because okay. of everything oh, I just yeah. put on, but I want you to feel that. This You're is right. the L'Oreal Paris Revitalist <laughs> Serum Intensive Pure <laughs> Hyaluronic Acid and Caffeine yeah. Eye Serum. Okay, yeah. so just picture this, okay? The, the, the applicator is cool. Mm -hmm. So when you put it on, you instantly feel like, <laughs> ah. It's like an oh, habitual cool. thing. Yeah, you know how it's cool. Yes. So let's roll it. And it has you put rollers. it in the refrigerator? So yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. I love. So you know what? I, you could do that. Yeah. And yeah, Jenna. Look at you. Nobody ever did tell up. me I have a great. Yes, yes. but I appreciate. Yes, it. but so it takes away the puffiness <laughs> because of the caffeine. It's a great deep puffer. And yeah. try it for two weeks. Give yourself a minute okay. to try it for two weeks, and you'll see the difference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to lotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So finding the right body lotion mm -hmm. is, this you know, it's kind of a Goldilocks situation because it's either too thick, too thin, too scented, too unscented. This one is perfect. It's right in the middle. You know, it's super hydrating, okay. but lightweight. It yes. has that fresh lotion oh, wow. scent. I love, I love that. that. It's got this big tube. And mm. we're always skeptical of things that say firming. You're like, yeah. how much can you really move the needle? One of our uh, staffers said, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. I feel like my legs look firmer. Wow. I'm not going to argue okay. with that. It we got to get to okay, this last one. Bio oil so much around here. Okay, the bio oil skincare oh oil. And Amanda tried this for us. I love this. This is a cult favorite wow. and an us favorite. Softening oil comes in a clean version now. So that's yeah. the difference. It's what you love, and it doesn't have fragrances, preservatives, or a paraben. Mm -hmm. And how great does that feel? It's just. It just, you feel mm -hmm. like your skin soaks it and up. you know what? Leave I, it in the I, shower and put it on right afterwards. Yes. See with the tips. Well, I love bio oil or something. I've had I, three C-sections, so I've used this. Not <laughs> too much information. Not right. enough. No, but, but for, useful. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, both of you all. And for these products, you have to head to today.com slash shop or use that QR code right there on the screen. And to see the full list of winners, pick up the latest issue mm. of People Magazine on newsstands now. I think people would be so surprised to know how long this process takes. We start getting products in early summer, and what are we? In oh my November. gosh. So we try these products for a really long time. There are spreadsheets for the spreadsheets for the spreadsheets wow. to track all of the uh, feedback. That's There's amazing. A Do you have a favorite? Oh God. Or are you yes, not allowed yeah. to say? Um, <laughs> of these, I really loved the Olay lotion. Um, I never really was a huge lotion person. Don't fire me for saying that. But this one just smells so clean and fresh. And it feels so good on your skin. I mean, the lotion person. Love. Jill, do you have a favorite on this table? Or are you not? Sorry. I, well, do I have a favorite on this table? You know, we tested so many items, as I'm sure she told you. I think my favorite would be the rock capsules because at night, mm -hmm. I think habitually it's nice to have a routine and something mm -hmm. that you do. And they're so easy to open and you just put it in your hand, you put it on your skin and you just feel so refreshed. And so I would say this is my pick. What would you They're like little miracle capsules. Um, I said the body lotion. Yeah, I understood the body lotion. 
All right, well, tune in for tomorrow, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, we're doing. We're very excited. Yeah. We sure hope you'll come back tomorrow and today because we're going to be hanging around here in Studio 1A with Lynn manuel Miranda. Oh, my. We cannot wait. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Currently in Budapest, uh, as I understand, you're shooting a film with Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis. What, what's it been like working with those two? Uh, it's been amazing, man. You know, we got a, an amazing cast. We're shooting Borderlands, which is uh, an IP that has an amazing following of millions on millions. Um, director Eli Roth, Lionsgate's the studio behind it. Um, you know, Kate Blanchett. Jamie Lee Curtis, myself, Jack Black. Um, I mean, God, we got so many more. It's it's truly one of these situations where you stumble into um, an opportunity that could progress into being super, super big. You know, this is something that could easily go into part two, three, and beyond uh, because of the world that we're playing in um, and the, the creativity within the within the space. So it's, uh, it's dope. It's, it's something that's once again, going to throw my audience for a curveball. I'm excited. Action on action. I'm responsible for the action in the movie. What's the, what's the premise? Uh, it's a, it's a game, you know, it's based off of a video game. So it's, uh, it's about, a uh, it's about the travel within planets and a search to find, um, an individual that possesses the powers of being the quote unquote special one, you know, um, and in finding this particular individual, you can use their powers that they have to open up what's considered to be this magical thing called the vault, which so many people have been trying to get into for years. But uh, to do it, you know, you have to you have to have the keys to go and get it done. And it's about searching for those keys, searching for the individual. And uh, that's that's the that's the story in a nutshell. But a band of misfits are kind of put together by accident. And when they're put together, they don't want to leave each other's side and end up fighting against the quote unquote bad people that live in uh, in between these planets. So. It's uh, it's it's like sci-fi, but it's really good. It's grounded within that space as well. Think Fifth Element. Think along okay. those. Lines. Yeah. You you continue to stretch your legs. I mean, let's because let's talk fatherhood for a moment. Here's here's a film where I think a lot of folks are going going to watch this, and they're going to say, oh, oh, that that's not the Kevin Hart I know. Like we're used to Kevin Hart making us laugh, and and not to give away too much, this is Kevin Hart. In a completely different light, how hard was it to uh, to to make the turn? Um, you know, it wasn't hard at all. I think uh, I think th there's no mystery from me to myself about what I'm capable of doing, um, especially in the in the space of acting. I know that I have range. I know that 
um, you know, I got a lot of diversity. So it's all about the projects, you know, when the right projects come along, if it's time for you to make those transitions, then of course you, you take it and you do it. Um, the upside was when I felt was the right time for me to step into the direction of drama, dramedy, and I had great company in doing so. Um, and after that, it was like, okay, that was good. I need to find something on this level or better. And the next project that was bought up was Fatherhood. Um, Marty Bowen had a script, brought it to me and my company at, uh, at Heartbeat. And, you know, we were blown away from day one at Matt Logan's story. And when I found out that it was true, that's when it was like, okay, this could be, this could be it because you're not only doing a project that's good on paper, you're doing a project that you would have to be good at and stay true to because it's real. Um, that was enough for me. You know, when I, when I got his reason, Matt was like, this is an opportunity to not only share my story, but bring light to a thing that happens that people don't really know happens often. Um, and you know, his journey from pain to happiness is one like no other. So, uh, my respect level went through the roof and my appetite for a meaningful piece of material uh, went through the roof as well. So everything lined up, man. Paul White's great director, met with him. Um, and then the Obamas came in as producing partners as well. I mean, all of the boxes were checked that said go. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in Today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Your your buddy B.O., as, as you call him. Yo, B.O. Um, what was it like working with 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 Bo on a project like this? Would would he call and and give give some some tips, some feedback? Would he say, "Hey, Kev, I, I think maybe we should do this and not this." You know, the thing about having good producing partners uh, is producing partners knowing their roles and you know where their value is, right? And uh, the value and and promise and having. Obama's and their company as producing partners is them understanding a good IP, a, a good piece of content um, with strong substance and great meaning that could do nothing but spread a, a positive needed message um, in today's time and in our culture, right? You know, you're talking about um, a black man on the big screen playing the role of a father in a positive light. Uh, I don't think I need to say it, but it's not something you see often, right? You don't you don't see it in a positive light often. We're crackheads, we're in jail, out of jail, we're missing, we're a discovery at the tail end of a life. It's never truly a story that's like from beginning to end, one that you follow in and one that's uplifting. So uh, in this case, I felt that there was a there was a need uh and 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 real want behind the message that was being delivered and you know without putting a stamp on the race card it's it's visual of this being an opportunity to change the narrative that i feel desperately needs to be changed so um the obamas got that and he said 
this is a great opportunity to uplift uh, black fathers and black men and, you know, give a nod to those that are embracing fatherhood and maybe a little nudge to those that aren't correctly, you know? So um, we were lucky to have them to be a part of it. Uh, once again, everything kind of lined up and all the right boxes were checked. Amen to that, Kevin Hart. Amen to that. How, how, how did you figure out how to cry on cue for the film? Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're pulling on emotional strings. You know, it's a, it's a heavy story. It's a heavy story. When I first read the script, honestly, I teared up in the first 30 pages. You know, when, when what happens happens, um, it got to me because it's like, damn, you know, this is, this is the happiest day of you and your wife's life. And, you know, nine months have been spent looking forward to this particular day. And on this day, to have something tarnished that or be taken, it's uh, that's tough. That's tough to process. That's that's tough to register. And those that have had that happen to them, my my prayers and condolences go out to them because I couldn't imagine. I I, I really couldn't imagine. So it was putting myself um, as deep into that as I possibly could to help me get the emotional um, the emotional response that I did. Um, and you know, it also helps when you have an amazing cast around you, you know, I mean, I'm with Alfrey, Alfrey Woodard and it's, it's, I mean, you're talking about the, the cream of the crop, the best of the best. So, you know, those emotions come out more when you see other people, um, putting those emotions on display at the thought of, so your game is raised by your surroundings. And you obviously are a father of, of four yourself. How did you draw on your own experiences with fatherhood for the role? Uh, I mean, I, that was my cheat sheet. You know, a lot of the stuff that I was doing, um, I had already experienced, right? So it wasn't like I was playing in a heavy false pretense for some of the stuff. Like I've, I have four kids and I'm on all different ages uh, across the board. So you know, being able to be hands on, being able to be a part. I know where the nervousness comes from. I know where the confidence comes from. I know where the fear comes from. Um, I've been there, you know, I've, I've, I've truly lived in it. Uh, I, had, I had to find comfort and discomfort at, at one point uh, in being a father. And I think so many other fathers do as well. It's just about acknowledging that, understanding that, and being true to that. And I was able to do that. I was able to take that ammunition that I had and apply it uh, to this particular movie, and it worked. You know, I think it uh, it really it really worked in my favor, and it and it shows on the big screen. What's been the hardest part of, of being being a dad? What do you struggle with the most? Hardest part of being a dad is the feeling of am I doing a good enough job? Well, you know, it's not a struggle. I think that's the wrong word. It's a it's a thought that's always in the back of your head. Okay. Because as your kids get older, the real world is magnified, right? And you can protect all you want. You can pamper or do your best to to do and take care of, but ultimately, you know, that kid has to go out into the real world and experience life on their own. So with that thought in the back of your head, it's one of, did I do a good enough job to prepare? Are they ready? Are they, are they capable? Are they going to get eaten alive and, and spit back out into reality? It's like you, these are the things that you just, you, you, you have tug of war with, right? So, um, I mean, my daughter's 16, my son's 13, about to be 14. My youngest son is three, my daughter's eight months. So, you know, once again, I'm very much spread out, but still I got a 16 year old, right? 18 is right around the corner. Am I doing a good job as a father? Am I present? Am I honest? Am I open? Uh, we're close. Are we close, close? Like, it's just, it's something. And I think that that's what keeps you it keeps you on your toes, it keeps you on your feet, and it keeps you in a position to, to always push and want for more, and that's within a relationship. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's your Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Then fun, bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You've been in the game a long time as a, as a dad, as you just, as you pointed out there. Uh, you had a child during a pandemic. How, how, was, how was that? Low, low, low PD, low pandemic, baby. Uh, <laughs> look, it was, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Uh, being privileged to, to bring a child into this world, that's a blessing within itself. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that the times were what they were, but a blessing is a blessing. And, and I'm not going to take it as anything other than that. Um, my little princess, you know, we got a new boss of the household. And I love that there's always a changing of the guard. Everybody's had an opportunity to wear that hat, that ball's hat. And right now, Ori has it. Got me wrapped around a little finger. Uh, starting all over, you know. Once you, you you thought you were close and they were getting out the house. And then I went in and, 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 and put two more in there. And I'm right back at the at the starting line. So <laughs> it is what it is, man. I, I love it. I enjoy it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. How how have you changed as a dad? I mean, when you when you started, you you were much younger. Yeah, yeah, forty-one, about to be forty-two. You grow. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the that's the great thing about life, right? You grow as you go. So uh, I'm I'm very much happy into the man that I've become, uh, the man who I was. I'm very much happy that that I was that man that I did the things that I did and got to experience a lot of the things that I experienced because. Without those moments and without those things, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in the position I am now to be poised, polished, um, you know, mature, just uh, a, a true adult. And I'm not done adulting. I'm not done uh, growing. You know, you don't you don't get there. Uh, the wise are the old, and I and I truly believe that. You know, there's nothing more refreshing. In a conversation with somebody of, of older age, because there's so much information that comes from that person because of how much they've lived. And what you find is, is that the information is, is key to the next wave success. But sometimes this next wave is a little too, uh, a little too stubborn, too cocky, too bullheaded to receive it. Um, at the older age that I am now, I've been I've been in a position to receive a lot of those gems and and I think it's uh it truly is the beauty of life to watch to watch time go but to watch people grow it's dope as hell to me. You're a father of four. It would it would seem to me at, at least 
not a stretch to be a father of five, maybe six. Have you have you given thought to doing it again? Oof. Uh, it's been a discussion, you know. I just told you this this my my baby Ori, you know, or is a blessing. There, I don't turn down a blessing. Now, am I planning for a number five? No. No. I'm not. <laughs> If a number five were to happen, yeah. oh, man, then oh joy, oh okay. joy, oh joy. Uh, okay. But right now, I think four is a good number. We are we're in a good place, man. Got a got some dogs, got some yeah. kids. We're fine. Five, five. You know, we don't really, we don't need to push for five. Not right now. I think we're in a good space. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. But I don't I don't run anything. I don't know why I'm talking like I can make these decisions. If my wife decided she wanted another baby, I gotta oh. have another baby. Yeah, there, there's there is no pushback for me, man. None. There was the accident uh, a while back and, and you suffered a pretty serious back injury. I I, I I caught some video online recently. You you seem to be back 100%. Saw some video of Kevin Hart in the gym and it looks like you're training for something. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh I'm definitely 100% back to myself. Uh currently in the best shape that I've ever been in. I mean, I got in crazy shape for Borderlands because once again, rolling is the action. I'm I'm all stunts. I'm all my own, you know. You're doing it all yourself? I'm doing a lot of that stuff myself. I got a great team. Uh, two great stunt guys, man. Two, two great, great, great stunt guys uh, that have been with me for quite some time. And, you know, what we do is we put me in positions to do as much of it as I possibly can. You know, when when it gets to be something crazy, my guys step in. But I, I love to be extremely hands on and get in there. And I did a lot of training for this movie. So I got down to about, I'll say maybe 10 and a half, 11 percent body fat. Wow. And, you know, all muscle, but I've never, I've never looked like this. I've never been in this shape ever in my life. This is definitely the best shape that I've gotten in at the age 41 and about to be 42. And I worked hard for it. So I, I love the results when you put in the effort. What's left, Kevin Hart? What, what have you, what have you not done yet that, that you still want to do? There's so many things uh, in, a, in, the, in the entertainment space that I've been able to tap into. And what I found is that the more diverse you are, the more the more you can do and the more you can elevate and create opportunities for those around you. Um, that's that's what my newfound focus is. That's where that's where my uh that's where my ambitions have rolled over to. So, you know, it's about finding the success and then creating creating bridges to get other people up here and over here. spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. <laughs> What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. 
We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. How you been? What's going on? Drinking milk, getting tall. So you in Budapest? Is that right? Yes, sir. Big Live one, from, the <laughs> from the pest. I think that's not what their tourism bureau <laughs> calls it. <laughs> Kevin Hart has built a career by making audiences laugh. Now the superstar comedian is proving he also can move them to tears. Wherever you are, I want to go there. Wherever you are, I want to go there too. In the Netflix drama Fatherhood, Hart plays a single dad raising a daughter after the sudden death of his wife. I'm going to do it because I'm a father. I was ready for the Kevin Hart experience. Within, I think, 10 minutes, I was getting choked up. This was an opportunity for me to expand my resume. People are going to be shocked when they see it and go, wow, you know, Kevin's got some dramatic chops. Two kisses. One for mommy. One for me. Well, I love the opportunity of being a black father on screen in a positive light. Most of the times they're on drugs, off drugs, in jail, out of jail, to have some type of positivity behind it and maybe be a part of kind of changing the stereotype. Hart delivers that message with the help of another famous dad named Barack Obama. Fatherhood is co-produced by Higher Ground, the production company started by the former president and first lady. Is Barack Obama calling you with you notes? You know what? I actually did talk to, to Barack. You know, first of all, I think it's just crazy that I can say I've, <laughs> I talked to Barack on the phone comfortably. And the fact that you can just drop and call him Barack, that's a statement right there of where you are. Yeah, B.O. <laughs> call him B.O. <laughs> hey, B.O., what's up, man? I'm sure he loves that. Kevin? Hey, Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin, how you doing? You tell me, B.O., I'm good. Uh, that's how it went down. The reason why they wanted to take on the project was because of the story and having them see and understand the positive message behind it. I mean, that's, that's as good as it gets for me. Hart specializes in positivity. His new book for middle schoolers called Marcus Makes a Movie is about a boy pushing through obstacles to chase a dream. And I wanted to help motivate and inspire our youth to simply understand that the word no is just a word. Coming up as a kid, as a young adult, early in my career, I heard the word no a lot. What's your message to the kids who might read that book who are hearing no at school? They're hearing no in sports or in their music career. They think they're funny and they don't know how to get where Kevin Hart is. I will say, you know, I think it's not about getting where I am. It's about getting where you want to be. Right. And all I am is an example of what's reachable, what's obtainable. And what I learned is that talent is amazing to have, but hard work is going to possibly beat talent every day of the week. Hard work plus talent is undefeated. In a year when the rest of the world slowed down, Hart's relentless hustle continued. He performed a hit 2020 Netflix stand up special from his own living room with his family getting ready for bed upstairs. I'm no longer comfortable anywhere else but my house. <laughs> I don't f like people anymore. What was that like? How do you put together an act differently than being in Madison Square Garden, for example, standing um, in your living room? Well, you know, we wanted to do something very intimate. Let's address the elephant in the room. COVID. Newsflash. I had it. The vid-19 was in my system. <laughs> It wasn't necessarily about the performance. It was just about me being honest about my, my life, the pandemic. Oh my when it first hit, I went and put gas in all the cars. <laughs> I bought every N95 I saw. I spent 20 grand on N95s. There's just a comfort that comes with being honest and aware. And that was about me having a realization that I'm, I'm good. Does that come with experience and success too, where you're now frankly can say, I don't need to go do that project because I'm good with who I am and where I am. It comes with experience, success, and also 
a true understanding of what happy is. There's a thing where this is going to make me happy. And if I get this, I'll be the happiest person ever. And then you get it. And then you go, oh, but if I get this, this is going to make me happy. This is all I need. But when you really realize it's about the people, family, the love, the connection, well, then things kind of change. Everything nearly changed one night in September of 2019 when Hart was a passenger in a single car crash that left him with serious injuries. How much of this perspective that I'm hearing right now, Kevin, comes from the experience of surviving the car accident that you were in and being able to come home and see your wife and see your kids and appreciate everything? I mean, tons. Understanding that you're not in control, that's a big deal. At any point in time, it can be over. Snap of fingers. Over. I'm fortunate and lucky to still experience life. I don't think most people appreciated how serious your injuries were. Yeah. Um, You broke your back. Almost paralyzed. Almost paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Are you recovered today? 100% recovered. Uh, I was very lucky to still be able to walk. You know, you're talking about a couple centimeters. Uh, That's what separated me and, and being paralyzed. One year after the crash and right in the middle of a pandemic, Hart welcomed a new member of the family, his second child with wife Aniko Parrish. Hart relishing his real life fatherhood. How's your baby girl? Oh man, my baby girl is amazing. Kayori, my heart. I'm so in love as I am all my all my kids, of course. But you know, we got a new a new boss in the household, so it's an exciting <laughs> time. It's me sitting down and getting to to really tap in with my loved ones, with my wife and my kids. Uh, it was a it was a really good thing for me. Live from Studio One A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, and welcome to the third hour of today on this Wednesday, November seventeenth. Al, anyone you want to send a special shout out to this morning? Oh, just one, Leela Roker, who twenty three years ago oh. Oh. Uh, popped up in our oh. lives and changed it forever. So uh, happy birthday, Leela! Happy Lila. birthday, she twenty. Three? 23, good, working a job, doing the whole thing. Yeah. Working a job. Working a uh, job. Hey, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. That was a not so subtle nudge. No. Wow. No. no, but a lot of kids that age do not have a job. No, no you're right. Struggling. I'm not talking about anybody in my house. No, no, yes. just, just, just saying for a Absolutely. Friend. There, there you go. go. Well, good morning to you too, Maria. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> hey, we've got a holiday handbook for you as we get ready to start those holidays to protect you from scammers. They've got some new tricks up their sleeve this season targeting us for while we shop there are shipping scams to look at for scammers i can't believe this are using